Hey, what's up? Well, you guessed it. We're about to do a podcast, and I'm waiting for somebody. You know who that person is? He'll probably join us sometime later. You know, he's back off vacation now. He's all relaxed and all that stuff. But yeah, JQ is late. So I'm just going to do my introduction and all that stuff and get all that going with, and then he'll be here to fill us with all his knowledge of RC. With that said, let's drop that intro. Nitro is the glory, but e buggy pays the bills. Welcome to the No Name RC Podcast. Get ready for some serious bench racing. But be warned, we speak our minds, express our thoughts, and sometimes things can get a little rowdy. Hate, and he just was influenced by the hate coming from the left, the hate coming from the right. And let's get back to more club racing and less of this money-grabbing book races. It's hard not to be sense. arrogant when you're always right. Yeah. See what I mean? That's exactly why people call you arrogant, Max. You may not agree with everything we say but it's definitely worth the listen and our pick can you stop whatever you're doing join your host Letty the great with co-hosts and guests as they get together <laughs> to chat our scene. hey after that race that i watched this morning i have to talk about it here we go 100 bucks right here 100 dollar throw oh no <laughs> i like this Yes, indeed. Nitro is the glory, but E-Buggy pays the bills. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number 210. That's right, 210 of the No Name RC podcast. I'm your host, Keena White, a.k.a. Left It Great. And sometime, at some point, JQ will be joining us. I'm not quite sure when that's going to happen. I'll just get a random message saying, I'm okay, you have an hour, and we'll have him on the podcast. But we'll, he will be on her to answer your questions. He has some rants, he says. So let's see what he says. But uh, yeah, thank you for joining us. This is episode 210, and our guest this week is Mark Santa Maria. He just spent 90K on his podcast, I mean, on his YouTube channel, sorry. He does the spec, spec, spec slash series that he just started. So I had him on her. It was supposed to only be an hour, but we ended up talking for an hour and 45 minutes about RC. He was asking questions. It was a great chat with Mark. I really love what he's doing, and I was doing some good things for RC. So thank you to MSN for his his time. And of course, you guys all know who Mark is. And congratulations on 90K. And let's help him get to that 100K mark as well, because we need people like Mark to help spread the love and spread the word about racing. So with that said, I want to say thank you to all of the NNRC squad around the world. We can't do it without you guys. Thank you guys for the continued support around the world. It was really great being at the world and getting all the love from everybody around the world. So I greatly appreciate that. We can't do it without your support. Remember, I need I need you guys, please, to hit that sub button on YouTube, hit that notification button, hit dislike or like, and leave a comment and share if you can. If you're listening to this on the audio side of things, please leave a comment. All that stuff helps us get out into the algorithms. If you aren't following our TikTok, TikTok if you aren't following our Facebook or our, our Instagram, please do. It helps us out. And we greatly appreciate it. I want to say shout out and thank you to all of the NNRC patrons around the world. We can't do without you guys. If you wish to be a patron of the podcast, you get perks like early release on the on a, on on the um, podcast. You get uh, patron only giveaways and all that good stuff, and you help us out a little bit as well because that helps pay some of the bills and helps just things make a little bit easy as well. So thank you to the patrons of the podcast. You can find a link for that in the written description of this podcast. If you don't want to be a patron and you just want to be a YouTube member, uh, you get a little less benefits, but you get also part of the community, and it's like the cost of a cup of coffee a month to be a YouTube member. You can find member. You can find that in the link of this the written description of this podcast. Also, if without sponsors, this is not possible or advertisers we really enjoy thank you these companies for advertising with us uh if you're a company looking to advertise with the nnrc in 2023 uh, we're just redoing all of our sponsorship stuff we'll have some information for you hit me up hit me up via facebook hit me up via email and uh let's see if we can work out something for you but they are invisible speed 
www.tzio200.net. Joseph has a special promotion going on. Le- learn about that in this podcast. TZO 200 tires, TNR fuels, high tech RC, beach RC, Mayako, techno RC, lugs racing tires, Papa Willie's traction tonic for all your traction needs, G spec RC tuning for all your cabling needs and tool needs. We've got some nice tools out. Sun Pedal USA for all your racing battery needs. We still have a giveaway. Episode 203, go listen to it, figure out how to win it. Racecraft USA launched our wadule. I need to get one. RCGP, we'll be at RCGP next week. Can't wait. Last round, House of RC. Shout out to Kanye Nung at House of RC. If you haven't already, clear it, your profile right there. Clinic RC, happy birthday to my good buddy, uh, Tony Newland, belated birthday. I've uh, got a nice new trailer out there. And of course, shout out to the RC, the NNRC drivers. They are the Viking David Ronafal, Teebs, Tebow. Uh, Jared Tebow, the Dr. Alexander Hagberg. Happy birthday to him, belated birthday. And of course, Robert Baddie. So before I go on any further, I just want to say shout out to all of our Florida and Carolina races. Everybody who's been affected by Hurricane Ian, I believe, it went right up through, through Florida and then headed up to the, to the Carolinas. Everybody I know in RC is doing pretty good. So that's good to see. No major damage. And man, uh, if you check, if you was following Facebook, uh, RC legend Jeremy Quartz's son had a bad motocross accident and broke his back this past weekend. And uh, I just feel so bad for Quartz. They started a GoFund for, for this young man. I'll leave a link for that in the written description. Every little bit helps. Uh, send some love to Quartz and um, his son, man. Really, really sad to see that. Also, we have a few race announcements coming up. So I was talking to my buddy Nuno Silva up there in Denmark. Uh, he's the owner of RC Thunder, and they have the Fear Farm 5.0 coming at the end of this month in October, where we'll see drivers like, I believe, the Killex are going up there, uh, a bunch of other Mugen drivers, all uh, going up to this nice indoor track in Denmark, where they will race in the Fear Farm 5.0. Uh, check more. I did post about this on my Facebook as well, so you can check more. You check that out a little bit more if you want. Also, it seems to be that endurance races are becoming real popular. So it looks like Ryan Reese and the Racecraft guys and a bunch of other guys are doing a Reese 240 Enduro Cup, which will be at the dirt. It's on December 2nd and 3rd. This is sold out too, by the way. And it's 17 teams, I think. Uh, and it's $200 per person. You're allowed one pro driver, two intermediate drivers, one sportsman driver. If you can't, can't find a team, we cr- will create a list of drivers looking for a team. So the rules are one nitro buggy team must use the same car or radio must use the same chassis and transponder. You can fix any parts that break during race. You can change tires, receiver batteries and radio batteries. You must rotate r- drivers in every, every set order, every 30 minutes must use a buggy tank of 125 C. <laughs> and of course, like anything these guys do, you must be encouraged to stay well hydrated. I'm surprised they ain't giving you bread helmets with this. So, yeah, this is going to be, looks like endurance races are taking over. We just had one at Hearts. We got another one here. I've never done one. I like to do it. I think Mod's going to be there doing the the coverage. So I look forward to this. Great idea. I like seeing anything that's having, make letting people have fun and get into RC. So that's good to see. So check it out. Also, uh, my buddy Dale Roberts, who's an RC racer, but also a long time and national champion in the RC boat world. As you guys know, I kind of geeking out over boats, but Namba's going to have their 50th nationals this, uh, not this weekend, but the following weekend when I'll be at Masters of Dirt. Man, if I wasn't going to Masters of Dirt, I probably would have tried to make the trip out to this, but it's going to be in Monterey, Cali, California. I like to, my bail, my buddy Dale Roberts, he's going to there and go and race seven classes. Wow. He said it's going to be like 650 boats all these different classes. This is the 50th nationals that the national American model boat association has had. And that's really good to see. Um, it's something I want to go to next year as a, is a boat race. So I wish my buddy Dale all the luck as he goes out there and races. And um, yeah, if you're in the Monterey area, go check it out and see if you want to go see some cool RC boat racing, man. I'm, I'm so tempted to go. So tempted to go pro line by the fire this week. That looks cool. My buddy Sean Rosen, Rusen and Tyler are going up there. I look forward to their live videos. So lots of RC going on. Lots of RC. We got a couple more races left. Obviously, we got Masters of Dirt coming. We got RCDB next week. We got Masters of Dirt coming up. We got AMS coming up. Uh, Florida Carpet Championships coming up. And then Fall Brawl. So those are like 
the last bit of races we have coming up at the end of this year. We got silly season. I was going to start silly season with JQ this week, but we kind of don't have time. We haven't really heard anything, but soon I'm starting to see silly season starting to kick in. I haven't seen no pro moves. I'm hearing a few things, but I can't really say anything right now. So just waiting. I'm like a sniper right now. You can't even, I mean, just blend it in. Can't even notice me. Anyway, I think that's it. I think JQ is ready. So I'm going to get JQ in her, find out what it's been up to. And uh, we'll get talking about RC. So with that said, thank you guys for all the support. Let's get on to episode 210 with, uh, let's get Beaconer. Where is Beaker? JQ, what's up? what's up? You look really pale, or is that just that light that shone on you? Uh, it's a camera setting, I guess. Look. Oh, you got your ISO set pretty high? There we go. That's better. See, I know all these big, these terminologies now, ISO and all that stuff. What's up, JQ? You look happy. I haven't seen you since you got back off vacation. So your vacation ended up actually being like more than just four days because then it took you a week to get back to Finland. Fin- yeah. I mean, I did say the whole month of September after the Worlds, basically. So, But I did uh, work for a lot of it. Did you work when <laughs> you were on the, the island? No. No, I did. I turned my phone off. I really did. Uh, I didn't use my phone other than for Google Maps and the camera from Thursday to Monday. I managed. You know what? I tested this because I messaged you and you didn't answer me. Mm. No, I mean, that doesn't really mean anything. But it didn't go through either. Yeah, it didn't go through. So very good. Uh, well done. We yeah. all have to turn off. Do you feel re Generalized, re-generalized. Is it regenerated? To be honest, it wasn't long enough for my needs. I I wasn't really able to switch off. I would need a longer time. re or R. Yeah, no, I think it's possible, but I would need a bit of a longer time. I haven't found it. Place. I haven't found it yet. Yeah. It you you never off. Um all right, well, so just real quick. What did you do on this island? Did you have any interesting conversations with any animals, reptiles, fish, maybe a dolphin? <laughs> My conversation was with that frog in the pool after yes. the worlds. That, that's you, about it. Uh, I didn't really do anything crazy on the island, except everything was super expensive. So I spent all my money eating. <laughs> How much was yeah. a beer there? Now, beers you could get pretty cheap in some places yeah that was okay but like uh, food was expensive i see the vikings off his vacation he went for quite a stretch too so he's back yeah back on the grind because we're back in america next week i'm staying for the extra week for masters of dart and then we come back and then well that, we'll just leave it at that it's our year may not be finished let's just put it that way so in that case we might be doing something later on this year. Uh, I want to tell you something. I started building my Mayako buggy. Yeah. You know how far I got? No, you did? Yeah. You know how far I got? Um, the first diff? I assembled the carry in, carry bag. And then okay. I, after 20 minutes of fighting with that and getting it done, that was enough. That was enough wrenching for me. Okay. So I must say... Yeah, but, it's, um, yeah, go on. It's really nice to have this bag, but it's very difficult to get that plastic stuff in there. But I did get it in there, and it's really cool. But that's about the amount of wrenching I've done on the Mayako. So after a year, yeah, I yeah. assembled the carry-on bag, which is carrying my RC boat parts, by the way. Okay. So. Well, you almost mentioned the last trip we have this year after RCGP. Shouldn't we start to promote that? Isn't it all sort of figured out and set? Well, I mean, I'm organizing it, so it's not really fully set yet. <laughs> well, maybe if we talk about it now, then maybe someone comes out of the woodwork and is the missing piece we need to make All it right, happen. so, you know, back in 2017, so I, like I said, our year isn't over, so I've been kind of planning this tentatively for quite some time. But we kind of are, looks like it's going to happen. Still, anything can happen. We haven't gotten plane tickets. We haven't got anything yet. But uh, back in 2017, you and I went on a South America tour. 
for three weeks, which went off flawlessly, I would like to say, you know, totally planned out to T. First time ever doing something like that. Nothing went wrong. Absolutely. Everything went smoothly. So uh, we're going back. And but well, we're going to do it bigger and better this time. It's like it's so it's invisible speed. So this is the next iteration of invisible speed, as I like to say. So we're going on to uh, Lima, Peru. Uh, then we're off to Sao Paulo, Brazil, which we'll be going to Hyundai, which is the D- Davy Davison's track. And then we're going to finish it off in Santiago, at which I think Chile, which I think is the best RC facility I've ever seen. And they just redone the offer of tracks and they're racing a lot down there in Chile. So we're going on to these, these countries. There's going to be a three country tour, three weeks. And we're going on to spread the RC love, promote Latin American racing. And uh, yeah, the Latin America um, invisible speed book in Spanish and the invisible speed course in Spanish. And now the invisible speed, are we calling them clinics or camps? Academies? I don't think we've decided on anything. I've just academy. been calling it a clinic. Yeah, but it's Invisible not. Invisible Speed Academy. But this isn't. Invisible uh, so... Speed uh, Alignment ses- Sessions. Well, it could be Invisible Speed on F your car. Yeah. But this is more than theory. This is also practical. So it's not just a clinic. It's it's probably going to be a. It's so the, the ads. So we're going to do two day camps where we're going to do theory. Then we'll get on and get on a track and do practical with these guys. Videotape this stuff, like actually have evidence towards this here. And then you we'll have a race. Who, you haven't said who we are. Well, I don't know. Like you, you haven't given me permission to release all the details yet. So who right. is we then? Yeah, well, I don't speak Spanish. No, so you don't. We have someone in Invisible Speed who does, and it's not lefty. Yeah, because my Spanish sucks. So it's going to be me, Lefty, and uh, Robert Bacchia. Yeah, so... so he's translating the course into Spanish right now. And uh, the book already exists in Spanish. So if we're going to do something in person, it makes sense to have a native Spanish speaker present. So Robert is going to join us. So the three of us are doing this uh, tour. End of November, right? Yeah, end of November, I think our first... Stop. We go to Lima, which will be the last weekend of November. And also we're going to be doing like social media because we know we've learned so much since then about social media. So also we want you guys to follow our tour as well, because I, I also plan this. So we do some touristy stuff as well. Like we always never, we go to these races and we never, I don't. Uh, it's always fly. You do because some of you drive, but it's always fly in, fly out. So we're going to go explore different cultures, try different foods, all this type of stuff. Well, I am. I know you ain't because you're finicky like that. But it's going to be like a RC tour, invisible speed slash. Yeah, it's just going to be fun. Let's go look at the culture of these different countries. Let's spread some some spotlight on this racing culture, which we did back in 2017, which is regenerating because they stopped a little bit during covid so, yeah, the only problem is, like, I wish we could go to a lot more countries, but this is a big, big, you know, we just kind of have to slim it down to these certain cities, go where we where we think will be most effective. And then hopefully this is the start. Not hopefully. Well, I know this is the start of something that we can then take to the masses when it comes to these invisible speed camps and all that stuff. So what we're going on there, we're going to have fun. It's going to be a lot of video, photos. This is actually where, like, we all, this is where my choking you, like, started. So maybe, you know, that all, like, the pictures of me choking you. So it should be fun. And hopefully we can get some of the other countries to come over and support this and be a part of the clinic. We are going to have a race on this Sunday, which is open to everybody. So if you're already in the clinic, don't worry. You'll be all ready to do the race. But if you don't want to do the clinic, you come, do the race. The race is more to have fun and just to see if these guys who have been in the clinic learned anything. So, yeah, what should is be it good. Capped at how many people? Well, I think we're looking anywhere between 15 and 25 people for the clinics. We don't, and I think 25 is getting on the higher end of people that we want to do. 
because it's more focused on less people, more focus on them. And uh, yeah, just think motocross camps, but RC. So yeah, hopefully we go down, we, we fine tune this. We, I mean, because I mean, you, you two are the knowledge. I'm just the person that talks most, but you guys are the knowledge. This is your specialty. Robert's obviously, obviously very knowledgeable as well. I and mean, between you two, his Spanish, my gibberish, I think we can do some pretty good stuff. And you you understand a little bit of Spanish now. You do. And then three weeks down there, you'll pick up a lot. I think it's going to be fun. And then we get to explore different things. Like, yeah, I want to see this. I want to do that. And we take everybody around the world with us when we do that. That's going to be cool. So enough about that. Let's see. Uh, we'll have more details about that in the coming weeks, days, but not long from now. JQ. You know what? Yeah. We have to go into some RC news real quick and then some questions. And then we have a little bit of a rant. So let's get on to that real quick. And this week's RC news is brought to you by High Tech RC and TNR Fuels. High Tech RCD is a lead in RC systems. If the, delivering the highest performance and reliability supported by a dedicated customer service personnel. They have the HSBC 9381TH servers and the new DBE 778WPs that they're using for 10 scale on and off road. I also up with a new 25 tooth specific servo and hold on and these are all built with the high technology industrial servo strength in innovation that high tech is famous for don't also forget their rdx2 pro charger which i use exclusively to charge up all my my batteries with my new g-spec leads that i haven't released yet haven't shown you guys yet but uh, yeah, great charger, can charge two batteries at a time, has a Bluetooth dongle. You can do it all off your phone. Very good. Trust in high tech, your server and charger headquarters, and you can find them at visit hightechrcd.com slash where to buy. If you do buy it from somewhere, just leave a note. Said, I heard about this on the No Name RC podcast. It helps us out. TNR Fuels. Here at the NNRC, we're all about that glory, and that glory is nitro. TNR Fuels is the hottest nitro fuel on the market, and operated by Chris Nelson and his family, made by racers for racers. The fuel is currently available throughout the USA and is shipping internationally. For more information to support the company, visit them at www.tnrfuels.com or contact Chris directly on Facebook, House RC, or shoot him an email at chris at TNR Fuels. Thank you to High Tech RC. Thank you to TNR Fuels for their support. Remember, guys, if you do anything, if you buy any fuel, just drop our name. Let us know that you heard about it on the NNRC. And JQ, with that said, we're going to go right into news. I'm going to unmute you. Your mic was making all this funky noise. Got to get you a new mic. Uh, not too much news going on, JQ. It's coming to the end of the season, but we do have a few races left. Uh, and your mic. Check your mic. I'm going to mute you for a second. So here we have the big races that we had this week. Uh, where's my notes? Hold on. There we go. So we had the six-hour endurance race at Hearts. Uh, I was trying to find some results for this. I couldn't find anybody, but my buddy Adam Reavy was there. And he just let me know about it. I like endurance races. I kind of want to participate in them. Joseph, ever participated in an endurance race? Yeah. First sort of first couple of years I raced, we did some endurance race. Yeah, how does that work? I'm Would not you... a big fan of endurance races, to be honest. Really? Are you taking a picture of me? I took a picture of what we're doing. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, well, how long was your endurance races? Do you remember? I can't remember, but it's not really my thing, to be honest. I like it. I want to be a part of it. I want to do it. Just because it's not your thing, I want to do it even more. Uh, <laughs> Just like fifth scale. Yes, love fifth scale. Love fifth scale to the utmost. So the two big races that we had this week were the INS. Oh, man, who is messaging me right now? Not a good time. Uh, the INS race at Hoosier Hobbyplex. I just wanted to bring this up because I thought this was, I said to you that A3 was pretty interesting because Fenn won this, but uh, it wasn't easy for him because Mayfield it had to go on to the A3 Sorry, I'm looking for my results here. It had to go down to A3 in, in four-wheel drive. And then Mayfield and Fenn were having a good battle. Then I think Mayfield broke in the end. So it wasn't an easy sweep for Fenn, as we usually see. But I want you to see this track, Joseph, because I thought that this track was really good. I know I've been on this carpet is the future thing lately, and I still think it is. But I think that these guys at Who's a Hobbyplex, 
they do such a great job with this dart and this track's pretty big and we had i just really like this layout and i thought you would like it as well so i'm gonna just put up uh a the start of a3 from hold on finding it trying to find it where is it there we go the start of a3 four-wheel drive from we'll have a look at it just in like, a minute let's look follow the absolute track joe so tell me what you think mayfield's leading mayfield's pretty nice leading right now mayfield in the two so let's follow him he's got the most to take from this right now if he gets out front Big triple into so a single, right now, he has double, a total up over, overall, fast, a flowing, and a elevation. Dakota has a one and a five, and he's still two. So Onto Dakota a straightaway. Greg will like the Well, not a straightaway. Right it has jumps, but so I like that. Dude, Mayfield, Fenn was cutting that so close everything. in this race. Look at this. Where is this track? This Old is in. Buggy, okay, you've done it now. He's good. Somewhere in the Midwest. I w- want to say... Ohio? Oh, Northwest Hobbies. No, this is a Northwest Hobbies. So as we follow that battle, oh, it's just this is right now. Hooser Hobbyplex. Nice. This is Hooser Hobbyplex. Cavalarian Horn and the Eight. Huh? All very close together, and we expect to stay so for a couple of laps here with the pros. Mayfield is not letting go of the back. Of These guys the had a nice right little now. battle. Look at that wheeling right up on all the right. back. Did you see enough of the, re- of the race? Turning up that wick as he yeah. tries turn it to off? catch is the Phenom. Huh? Yeah, Both good size track. Right it now. is nice, isn't it? When's the last time you've seen these type you of jumps doing the trip at a single. 10 scale track? Dirt track. Coming over. Like it in this yeah, one, even with a 13. Been a while. Been a while. All right. Cool. Great track. Okay. Great track. Um, congratulations to those guys. I really like this. I've been talking to them. Nice group of guys. It's a really great facility. Uh, but let's look at some of these results real quick. So, like I said, it was Fenn, Mayfield, Tasman, Champlin, Rivkin, Born Horse, and Davey Bada, Cavalier, Aiden Horn, Cole Tallard, and Renner Connect in the A and Four Wheel Drive. You know who wasn't in the main? Cavalier? No. Born a Crime. Born a Crime? Was not in the main. Not in the main. But his, his, his buddy, David Bada, was. So. Mm. We gotta have, we know, we gotta go to California. We gotta have intervention for Mona Crime. Gotta have intervention for him. Uh, let's let's see a two wheel drive result. So Fen, Fen won this in A one and A two. Tasman, Tasman, ooh, look at Tasman second. Rivkin third, Tallard fourth, Mayfield fifth, Champlin sixth, Cavalier seven, Rinnekinek eighth, Horn, Lamu, Dustin Evans. Wow, Dustin Evans squeaking in there on eleventh, hey. Check that out, JQ. Dustin uh, Evans. Dustin Evans still around. Is he like old... fully professional RC driver still? Yes, he is. I I I don't I, I sometimes wonder how. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, but yeah, how is he st- like he doesn't he doesn't race much. Well he does he does all this 10 skill stuff, but he still he still makes these mains. So until he doesn't make any these mains, you know. Yeah, S-Works pushing uh, 10 scale because I was I was told that next year is going to be uh, a lot of 10 scale. Are we seeing the ramping up of 10 scale now because of the worlds coming up, you think? Uh, has has that been confirmed finally? finally? Is it at the no. carpet track in Florida or what? We haven't got, we don't know where the worlds is going to be, what, okay. what track it's going to be. Well done, Ifmar. But uh, we don't know that yet. So maybe we need to know that because it's probably, what, eight months away? So yeah, we shall see. I Do we have a date already? Just no location, but the date. I, I have. I would have to go on the website and check it out. I haven't done that, so I have not done that. Uh, we had the on-road nets in Puerto Rico this past weekend. Very low turnout, but they had it. I think this is the first raw nets that they've had in in Puerto Rico. It was the fuel nets. So you have Bryce Butterfield who won. 10 scale followed by Jose Alamante, Platino Power, Dominican guy. This guy has been racing a lot. He's been doing pretty well. Jose Colon won eight, the eight scale class. The guy from Lima, uh, sorry, from Peru, Paulo Maragante, won GT on uh, Nitro. Scotty Ernst is a national champion. He won the Masters class in the honor, like the GT class. And then Jose Alamante won the 
GT Electric class. So congratulations, young guys. Congratulations to Puerto Rico having the first nationals, even though it wasn't well attended, unfortunately. But I understand with the storm and all that stuff. It was hard. Uh, let's go to the big on offered race this weekend, which was Buggy Land 9.0, which had a good bit of uh races there, JQ. A good bit. There was, I think. Oh, well, I was actually gonna say that big as in by name or what, because it didn't look like it had a lot of entries. It? No, and in, in, in quality of entries, I should say. Quality was good in the pro class. Yes, in the pro class. So let's have a look at... Well, I know Barufalo won e-buggy. And JCC won uh, Nitro buggy. Ongaro had issues, I believe, early on. And he... It broke in the pits. Yeah, broke in the pits. It was second. So... When he broke, so... Hold on, this is, doesn't make sense. Where is the... F I'm, uh, okay, I'm on... Um, Everlaps. And I'm trying to find the... Was it two finals? Oh, no, it's e-buggy. Sorry, I'm on e-buggy. I'm all lost. Why am I on e-buggy? All right, let's go to Offroad. So they had a lot of classes there. Really great track. I think we... I think when we talk about great track builders, we don't put Miguelo in there a lot. Maybe it's a yeah. little bit underrated, but man, so this guy built some said, beautiful tracks. Didn't you say Barufalo won? E buggy, I think. Yeah, he won the first main. Okay, sorry. I thought he won the overall. No. Kanas won both classes. Yeah, he did. And Angaro came second in, in e buggy. Electric and broken. And Parente, third, uh, Barufalo fourth, Borak fifth. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking for Nitro here. Nitro Buggy Pro. And we want the final A. But this is the track uh, you guys practiced at prior to the Worlds, right? Is it this yeah, one? but they rebuild it for this race. Did they so change? Actually, this, this could be sort of Europe's DNC in a way. Mm -hmm. That Americans would come over and it's a good location. Usually good weather. Barcelona, right? Good track. No, Madrid. Ooh, it is Madrid. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Did they change the layout completely or just change various yeah, they, features? They always change the layout for this race. Maybe this could be like the new race that Americans come to Europe at. It would be great. I would just like to see that happen. Yeah. All right. Uh, in Nitro, we had JCC, Borat Kilek, Robert Badier, Adrian Parente, the younger brother of Danielle, Reno Savoya in sixth. Wow, the shark, Oscar Navarro, Ricardo Montero, Marco Barufalo, Barkan, I think he broke. Boots having a stinker as well. He looks like he went on at the 44 minute mark. Fastest lap, Danielle Parente, 36 9, hill race. Kids fast. Mm. Kids got a future. Uh, who can stop Davide Angaro? Uh, breaks stop Davide Angaro. And JCC wins. No big surprise there. I was surprised. Hasn't Viking been to this race before? Kanas was leading. Ongara only started like fifth or sixth in the main or something. And he was second. Kanas was leading when he broke. So there's a chance that uh, Kanas would have won regardless. Yeah. Kanasa's like let's be honest though, Kanas is the one guy who straight up beat uh beat Ongaro this year. Like uh, yes, David yeah. did as well, but I mean if Where? you go back to RCGP, RCGP when they had that yeah. race, like incredible. I'm trying to find Yeah, that. but I mean I'm gonna won the sixty minute main in England. In the worlds, yes. And the world's and the world's warm up. So I don't know where did David beat him. David beat him at the Euros, forty-five minutes. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. And then uh, Canas beat him. Canas beat him in Italy. Yeah, but the race in Italy was very close. Like it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't a walk away. It wasn't anything like that for for Canas or Ongaro. It was actually a great battle. 
So great race for Buggy Leon nine point It looks like a track I'd like to go. I really like this track. Maybe we should like. And then he's coming over to America as well later on this year. Yeah, I okay. I have a mini rant, just a mini rant. Okay, so okay. a race like Buggyland is a perfect example of how stupid we are as an industry, okay. and how selfish and too greedy and selfish race organizers are. Okay, mm-hmm. because Buggyland track is nice. It looks nice in pictures. It looks good on video. All the comments when people see it is like, oh, where's this track? That looks awesome. I I want to race there, right? So it's attractive. The facility Mm -hmm. is good. Location is great. You can get a direct flight from most places in the world to Madrid. The track is 15 or 20 minutes from the airport. Hotels, 10 minutes from the track. Very affordable hotels too. Good quality air conditioning, uh, restaurants in the hotels, breakfast. Dinner, you can do everything in the hotel if you want to at a good price. Drive to the track 15 minutes, you got everything you need at the track, right? Mm-hmm. This could be the kind of race that gathers people from Asia, from America, like a neo buggy race, right? It mm-hmm. could, it really could. But if you're not willing to invest a bit in promotion, marketing, have good coverage of the race, pictures, video, everything, promote it, invite people to come, work with manufacturers, top drivers to get them all to go. That's not going to happen, is it? So when I just look at this, the state we're in, and I think that, okay, why can't we have these races where all the drivers are there? Like, imagine how much better this race would be if the RC Racing TV control crew were there doing coverage. Fend, Mayfield, Cavalieri, Tessman, uh, whatever Asians are left racing would be there. Like, can you just imagine how much bigger this race is? How many people listening to this podcast knew that this race happened? How many people saw a single lap of it? How many people knew who won? Right? Well, they did have coverage. Crazy. They did have coverage. This is it right here. Yeah, they, yeah, I know. They did. They did put this on... But I no promotion. On YouTube channel in Spanish, was it? Yeah, it was in Spanish. Yeah. Well, there you go. So <laughs> do you yeah. want to do it properly or not? Like, that's the thing. Like, what, it, what do you want? Like, if this is all you want, fine. But I don't think it is. So if you want to make it like a Neil Buggy or a DNC or you want to get Americans to the race, then fucking do it properly. Like, stop being too greedy. Give a little and get more. If you are too short-sighted to see that, then you're never going to get there. You have to invest a bit. Boom. Then you can get there. It's just frustrating. And also, not I did not know this race, race was going side, on, to be honest. But not, not just from the race organizer's side. The other side is the manufacturers. We So... All of us manufacturers pay drivers to race. And then we send them to these random races who maybe someone else shows up to race them. Why can't we send our drivers to the same races? Why can't this race be one where everyone goes? And then we have some other race, DNC, everyone goes. You know? World, everyone goes. It's the one race where everyone goes. Every other race is like, Five guys there, three there, seven there. Like, it's ridiculous. This is the one race that could do it, though, now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, Track looks it great, though. And then we get over. I, I can also, see you getting all worked up. You're all sweaty. Yeah, also, the Americans uh, can't complain because they build a new track for the race. Exactly. I was just about to say that. I was just about to say that. So all good reasons why we should get behind this race, I would say. Yeah, uh, but they also have to show that they want to make it you know, bigger. They have yeah. to invest a bit. That too. That too. All right, JQ. Um, I think that's it for news. I don't have much more. Uh, we're going to go on to some Beach RC I questions. Have, I have oh. one uh, news oh. item. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah. It has to do with Invisible Speed also. So we're doing okay. the tour. But there's another thing. So the online course. 
the world's promotion was good. We got a whole bunch of new people in there, but um, we need more. We definitely mm. need more. And this month in October, if you buy the course, you have a chance to win a Mugen built by Robert or a Mayako built by David. Really? Yeah. So they build it how they would build build the car if it was their own. So it's definitely going to be good. Put it on the track, you can race. And of course, you you have the contact to them then to make sure that you get it up running right and all of that stuff. You'll be on Discord. They are also on Discord, so you can you can uh, get get the help you need to get it up and running. So it's a really good opportunity to you know update your race car for next year. How so does one win do one? Is, so all you need to do is. Uh, purchase the course within the month of October. The full course can be Spanish language or English language. And if you already have the course, you can join in by uh, purchasing again, which will extend your access by a year. It won't start now like however It'll long start you have years up. Let's say, yeah, Let's say you have three months left. Well, you can buy it already now, and then in three months your second year starts. So, yeah. that's Let's uh, get this straight. So if you sign up for the Invisible mm -hmm. Speed online course not for the next, what what's the time limit again? Within October. Within October. So the whole entire month of October and now on yeah. 6th yeah. of October, 31 yeah. days in October, you will get the chance to win either a Mugen built by 2012 world champion Robert Badier or yeah. to your choice, I believe, or just to his choice, sorry, to his specs, mm -hmm. and a Mayako built by... 2016 world champion and also both of these guys are now are both three-time European champions, by the way. Mm -hmm. Mayako built by David, the Viking runner folk. And all you got to do is get knowledge because you're going to pay for knowledge anyway. Yeah. So even if, use. yeah, even if you don't win, you still win because you're in the course, right? Exactly. And if, if uh, the way to win is basically we take all the names and we draw a name at random and then that person gets to pick which one they want, and then a second name, they get what's left over. Okay. So that's right. how we'll do so it. Maybe I should buy a course and win a Mugen. There we go. Uh, <laughs> you could. <laughs> but it's a great deal. Good good promotion. Uh, remember, guys, so you heard it. Through the month of August, you have, it's now the 6th, October. you have to the 31st. Sorry, a month of, I don't know why I said August, of October. If you sign up for Invisible Speed, the online course, which is how much, Joseph? Ninety nine, ninety nine, or something like that. Uh, it's like a hundred and ninety five, but you yeah. can also pay in two payments. Right, so you can pay in two payments for one hundred ninety five dollars. You get the chance to win a Mugen or Mayako built by Robert Batty or David Runnefalk. Very good. All right, Joseph. Uh, look, let's go into some Beach RC bench racing Q and A questions, and uh, yeah, let's do that. BeachRC.com, the racer's one-stop online hobby shop. Choose from all the popular brands and variety in stock with super fast shipping and great customer service. BeachRC.com still has the local hobby shop feel with all the benefits of the internet. BeachRC.com is the exclusive distributor for Ultimate Racing, JQ Racing, Pro Circuit Racing Tires, Nitro Lux Fuels, and Assault RC Performance Products. So fill up your cart and check out at BeachRC.com today. That's right. Thank you to Beach, RC, and Brent and Lucas. Those guys. I'll see all of you guys next week at Myrtle Beach, the Badlands for RCGP. Then I'm off to Mod. Can't wait for that. Thank you for the support. We have an affiliate link for Beach RC. If you guys can use that, it helps us out, helps everything out. We greatly appreciate it. JQ, we got some specific questions for you. So I'm going to get right off the bat and let's get this going. This comes from my buddy Dale Roberts, who's going to the number 50th nationals for RC boats. Wow, you're all pixelated now. Your internet must be really bad or you're doing something that isn't good. But he wants to know, I've got a question. Tires at the Worlds. Why was the hot race tire supposed to be good? What made it superior? Tread carcass compound. And how did Angaro win with AKA or is he just that good? Real quick, Beaker. AKA started off really good because all the AKA drivers were doing good. Thibaut and uh, Lutz and Savoya in practice, they were all 
really high up. Surprisingly high up, you could say. Even in the first qualifier, I think Savoia was eight. You know, so the AK tires started off real good. And then for whatever reason, uh, the track changed and they weren't that good anymore because Lutz, Savoia and Thibaut all started fading back, except mm-hmm. Ongaro. He stayed there. And Ongaro drives and sets up his car differently to most other drivers or, well, all other drivers, I would say. And he is able to make a tire that people feel is too loose work. So he, he can be fast with that tire. So he was good. If we looked at what tires worked, then Hot Race was strong throughout the event. And uh, actually, the J Concepts drivers found pace when they started running their clay compound. Because in the mains, Mayfield was good, Fend was good, and they were running the clay uh, compound. And then in the main, David also put the Hot Race clay compound on. He was running the Sahara. So while the tread pattern did make a difference, I mean, it seemed like the sort of bar type of tire with with less flexing pins, sort of a mm-hmm. more mm-hmm. more more support, more sturdy pattern, tread pattern that doesn't flex that much. That seemed to be the way to go. And then the biggest difference was the compound itself. So the clay compounds from these manufacturers, that's what uh, seemed to be the best. Okay. And I think this could be an opportunity to say that I do think that for these events, again, one-off go world on championship, again. one-off world championship events, we should have control tires. I really think so. And it you, should you, rotate between the different brands. Because, and this is why, because if you do not have a tire sponsor who brings all the tires there, we are getting to a point where you just cannot compete. Seriously, you cannot. Because it is that the differences are too big between having the right tire and the wrong tire. There are too many compounds, too many options, and it's not healthy for the. It's also sport. expensive to get it there. Well, yeah. Also, even expect like that's another point. I'll get to it. So I think if we want racing to be attractive to people, and we want people to go to European Championships, go to World Championships, go to these international big events, then we need to make it so that they feel like they have a chance. And when they have to invest hundreds or thousands of dollars into tires and extra luggage to bring them and all of that, it's getting too difficult, right? It's not a situation anymore where you can just show up with M2 crime fighters and you'll be good. It's not that way anymore it's getting no. too difficult Bin that's why on, yeah that's why in on road they have control tires and 10 scale off road and i think we are at that point where we need to do that also okay and then the tire manufacturers might say well how are we going to sell tires blah 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 you have all the other races and local racing club racing and regional racing to sell tires right and then one world's will be yours another won't right but the thing is how it is now I bet you these tire manufacturers are actually losing money on the world. I was about to ask that. They you have think to they made produce, money? No, they have to produce so much, ship to the event, uh, then figure out what to do with all the stuff that's left. They hand out tires to so many drivers at the Worlds. It's I I doubt that they actually make money on the Worlds. Like who's mm. buying their tires there at, or for that race? I don't see it. So, so do you I think? think a, I think it's a cost for the manufacturers now. It's just sort of a status thing, like trying to win. At the end of the day, only one brand wins. So, like, what's the point? If we, if you now think about uh, uh, the brands that were there, like J Concept, spent all that money for what? If you think about it, like, for what? What did J Concepts benefit? AK won, Hot Race was second, and, like, pretty much everyone ran so Hot Race. So, I have a question. I have a question, real quick, and then we're going to we're gonna go on, because go on, we're going to try not to be too long on these questions. But if we went to control tire, would it still make sense for other tire companies to sponsor probably the online coverage of that event? 
and and get that recognition that way or why not the... i mean why not if you get your brand out there that's that's always good mm-hmm. it, and it's just one race you know or two races you I, I would like to know the numbers how cuz so. we all know like getting stuff to spain isn't easy you know what i mean and it's expensive yeah it's expensive but i i just see that as a better way and also it just makes the racing better because you're on the same tire so you'll be closer in performance and then you can focus on adjusting your car adjusting your driving really maximizing the po- performance of what you have now it's a case of even if if we look at david's race we can work on the car make it as good as possible but he can just n- never really be on the pace then he puts clay compound on and oh now it's perfect and he's dialed so there's that there's always that thing where you're thinking about the tire but if you all have the same tire, then the only thing you can do is adjust the car, work on that, uh, develop the car, work on your driving. E- you know everyone's running the same thing. I just I see only positives in this. Okay. All right. Next question is from Chris Trudeau. How many manufacturers are on 10 years ago? And it's surprising not to see Kyosha amongst the bunch. We're looking at the, we're looking at the, the world finals here. And I have to say, the only real new people, like SRX has been around for a while, Infinity, Mayako. Uh, yeah, we're not missing too many people from this. Kyosho, from I mean, he was like saying, how many manufacturers were, were around 10 years ago compared to what we're looking at the world's final? But the only people I can see here are Mayako and Infinity were the only ones. When did Techno start? Uh, I think they're 10 years old now. Yeah, maybe. About that. All right. But I think that there are too many brands. The RC industry really shot itself in the foot when all the manufacturers opened up OEM possibilities for everyone. Like Everyone started having their own everything. So there were tires, right? Now the trend is tires. So there were tires and there were like three brands or something, four brands, and now there's 30 brands. So same for servos, chargers, speed controllers, motors, nitro engines, uh, cars, everything. So everything that we use in RC, the big distributors or, or other brands who have something already, they expand and start making products of their own and brand it their own, mm-hmm. which makes it, it's, I would compare it to this. It's the exact same thing as you have a track and uh, then another track pops up mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and then another mm-hmm. track pops up in the same mm-hmm, region. Mm-hmm, and now mm-hmm. you are three tracks in the same region, right? Fighting over then the same you, group of people. Wait, and then you organize your races on the same weekends. Yeah. It's that same thing. I agree with you there. Yeah. I agree with you there. It's so stupid. Like, this is the sort of short sightedness in a way. You think that, oh, this is going to be good for me, but it turns out not that good for you, and it's ruining the industry. So, You're, you're full of rants today. Full of rants. I like it. All right. Next question yeah. is from Instagram. Check it past 503. Now that the world is over, should the U.S. drivers be concerned they no, no longer c- carry the prestige they once did? Any rumored silly season moves? We're going to talk about silly season later on, so we're not going to hit on that. What about this? Should the U.S. drivers be concerned they no longer carry the prestige? I don't think that that did that. I, I think these guys. That what doesn't carry the prestige? The U.S. drivers don't don't carry. Be concerned they no longer carry the prestige they once did. I still think they did. I just think that a lot of people didn't realize what we was talking about that these Europeans are just as fast or faster. I mean, I think they do. I think the Europeans still want to see Mayfield race or mm-hmm. or now even Fend or like if I think that if there was some race in Europe and then there was an announcement that Mayfield's going, I think a lot of people would go just because of that. Yeah, I think these guys still have their prestige. I think like just yeah. because they did look, look, just because they didn't win the world doesn't mean just because look for me, just because we're gonna talk about this later, but just because Tebow didn't make the final doesn't mean his prestige level doesn't go down. It's just it's it's hey, this you gotta understand that this race was hard, man. I don't think people understand how difficult the race was and how how talented people are. 
how much speed was there. This was real speed that we've seen. We've probably never seen on a different level. See, and I think in America, it's with Mayfield and Fenn pretty much being the two dominating guys in the last two years, we just got so used to just seeing American racing that we forgot. A lot of people forgot that there's fast guys in Europe. So, yeah, yeah I, I don't think there's any prestige loss per se, but I definitely think there are some guys that are running out of worlds to, to, uh, to make, to win one. So next question from Dom Tranquil. What do other classes lack that make nitro seem like the coolest class to race? It doesn't seem to be, it is the coolest class to race. I think, I think you can't get over pit stops, longevity. Of, I don't care what anybody says. I still like long races. I like the short 15 minute races. Pit stops make it exciting. Just sound nitro sounds. It sounds like something we're used to full scale motocross, maybe two stroke. And I think the fact that it's very hard to be good at nitro buggy racing is not easy. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of skill. And once you figure it out, it's very rewarding. And we can just see by the level, look at the biggest races in the world, the all nitro related. Like, so, I mean, look at the world's biggest worlds ever. Hardest race to win. We just saw after since 1986, we just saw the back first back to back ever world champion. So think about how hard it is. Um, so I think that's that. That's what answer my question. What makes Nitro so cool for you, JQ, real quick? I mean, it's just how it's the most similar thing to motocross without being motocross. Yeah. So off-road, dirt, engines. Yeah, that's that's it. All right. Electric Benjamin for me James. just doesn't do it. It just doesn't. Like if I if I race electric. 10 scale off road electric, I think is better than eight scale. Seriously. It's oh, just, really? It's a very different feel. Then it's I think you like two wheel drive because. And, it, no, I mean four wheel drive, but it's more about sort of precision, perfection. Mm, and mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. a lot harder in many ways, I would say, to drive than. You than, know what? Uh, eight scale, and that makes it fun. The challenge you, you drive your eight scale buggy like a two wheel drive buggy, that's what you probably need to just let go. <laughs> yeah, what did Mayfield say? Stop, JQ's car looks great, he needs to stop driving like a pussy. Yeah, and I would, I would, re- I would reiterate that your car was great and you was driving like one of those. Things. Yeah, it was good, it's right here. Oh, god, here we go. Oh, it's so good, it's okay. ready for RCGP. Pekko has to, Pekko is gonna run this, and uh. Huh? Yeah, because Sunkatin isn't vaccinated. He's one of those Facebook people, you know. So oh, so oh, so yeah, the you world's going to travel to Pecco. America if you aren't uh, vaccinated. Okay. All right. So All Pekko's right. going to run this, and I have I'm rebuilding my other one for uh, Cody. So who's going to be Cody's mechanic? You are going to be both mechanics. Well, I'm in the pits. I'm going to be for both. Uh, Pekko can do a lot himself, okay. so I think more for Cody, and okay. then but then on the track I have to pit for Pekko. Okay, that's fine. All right, next question comes from Benjamin James. Here's a question. Do you think about freestyle RC and RC racing at the X Games? I think we'll see freestyle RC first because I've actually been watching this guy do freestyle RC, JQ, like in pools and all this type of stuff, and it's really cool, fun stuff. Like he's doing backflips and like landing the transitions and on the downgrades of the pools and all that stuff. I think that's what's going to capture people's eyes more than racing right now. Big jumps, whips, front flips, backflips, all this type of stuff. It's re- like freestyle RC is becoming a thing. I'm telling you, you think I'm crazy. The but interest level zero. In your interest level zero, because you, mm-hmm. you, you only have a racing mind. Yeah. But in my brain, I love it. Watch it work. Joe Zaire Jr. We've seen all the f- fishing tournament cheating scandal at this point. Did you see that where these guys got caught cheating fishing? No. So what basic. So the, you know these fishing tournaments have big cars. Like you make a lot yeah. of money. This guy apparently had has won over three million dollars. He got caught putting lead weights in his fish. Like he'll catch them oh, okay. and put lead weights in his fish, and put other parts like filleting fish and putting fish like. And this make like pushing it down their stomach and all that stuff. So he wants to know: Do you think we should expose blatant cheaters in RC? 
The CMA, I think so, but I love confrontation. That's Josiah Jr. Yes, of course, cheaters should be who's called. Who's cheating? Up. Yeah, I mean, well, we have to figure out who's cheating. I think it's talking. I, I don't know if Joe's talking about X-ray or whatever, but Joe is of ran out of talent podcast, so I don't know. Yeah, call out cheaters if they're cheating, but make sure you have proof, like undeniable proof. Chris Trudeau, can anyone stop Ongaro? Having watched Ongaro compete at the world stage in a regular racing as well as RCGP, what kind of surface is his kryptonite? I'll tell you what kind of surface is his kryptonite. DNC at night. Ongaro? Yes. Yeah, he said he doesn't want to go anymore. I think it's just the whole race. The long days. Yeah, I mean, the race is pretty terrible if you aren't used to that kind of stuff or if you don't like that sitting around socializing uh if you're there to race your car then it's not the best like if you're there to race rc it's not the best but that i would say yes that's that's maybe his worst uh yeah he does not do well there he's like non-existent at dnc you it know, has to do with big, the sort of the setup he runs and the tires mm-hmm. he runs. Like he could be just as good there as anywhere, but it would require him to spend some more time there and figure out his setup for those conditions. Well, he, this is part of my rant in the next one, anyway. So I'm not going to get on this. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I agree there. So we have some Discord questions. Coop the boss, two wheel drive or four wheel drive? Wait. Before I answer that, I have to say, I oh, always hear these things when people say, oh, this guy could win with anything or he can drive anything or he whatever, right? That's a great example. Ongaro wins, Worlds, uh, all these races on these kind of tracks, sort of European or mixed European-American style tracks, Australia Worlds also, right? Go to mm-hmm. DNC, he gets slapped. What, did he just forget how to drive? I thought he can win with anything, right? So why didn't he win there? Why doesn't he win DNC every time? This is what people don't understand. They just say things without actually thinking. The drivers who win, win for the for a reason. They can't just switch to any car or any tire or any engine or run any setup and still win. They'll win locally against you who are saying that, but they won't win against the best in the world. So, yeah, there's another rant for you. So what you're saying is that at that level, having the right car is more important than at any other level, pretty much. Yes, actually. Yes, because the people who always switch cars, I need to switch cars and this does, car doesn't suit me. And the people who say that, they just suck. Oh. They suck. <laughs> really, like... They suck at understanding how to set up the car, how to work on the car, and they aren't that good drivers. They haven't actually worked on their driving. Mm-hmm. So they don't understand what they need to do to make the car work. So it's not that it doesn't suit them. It's just that by chance, the setup isn't right for their driving, and they have no idea what to do to change it to make it good. So okay. they are just changing for because of lack of skills and effort. But at the top, the thing is that they they do know or have someone around them that knows how to set up the car. They are good at driving. They understand what the car is doing and what they need. Maybe they can't do it, but someone will figure it out with them. And there it really makes a difference because they are driving the car to the limit of performance. They are adapting their driving. They are doing everything to reach the maximum performance of what they have. So in that situation, uh, if you radically change the setup or you change car brands to a different kind of car, then it can make a noticeable difference. But when when you are at a lower (laughs) level where there's still so much more improvement, Mm -hmm. like there's such a big gap between where you are and where the top is, you can improve yourself with what you have, you know, to catch up. But when you're already up here, what more can you improve? Like then when Mm -hmm, you change mm -hmm. stuff, you're going to notice a difference, Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm, So it's mm -hmm. kind of funny how that Yeah, like everybody says, oh, this guy guy can drive a a 
Tyco car of it. No, they can't. They can't. It's not that easy. It's yeah. you see even guys struggle. All right. Uh we have some Discord questions and then uh two YouTube questions, then we then we're then we're done. Coop the boss, two wheel drive or four wheel drive, two wheel drive, carpet. There we go. I'm taking that one. What about you? I mean, I, I like both, to be honest. If I had to only drive one, I would drive four wheel drive ten scale okay. on dirt. Rick, what's the word on the Mayako e buggy? When will it be out of prototype prototype stage? So next year they de- decided to organize a ten scale, I mean ten scale, eight scale electric worlds. Mm-hmm. So we decided to keep it as a prototype still until the worlds, basically. So we oh, can any- develop the car uh, for the worlds. Any idea when the date of that is? I don't know. August, okay. September, I would guess. Oh, that's going to be a long time. All right, Jake Barrett, will RCGP come back next year, or is this it? Oh, uh, I mean, the rumors are next year. I haven't heard anything. I think I- it will be back, uh, but in a different form. Okay. We can't elaborate on that? No. Okay. I haven't heard anything. I'm sure we'll know more after this week, next weekend. All right, so we have a couple of... YouTube questions. So if you guys haven't joined, we have a, I'm getting a little bit more active on our YouTube community in the NNRC. Uh, we also have a membership thing. If you can, for the cost of a cup of coffee a, mo- coffee a month, you can support the NNRC and get early release on videos. And um, yeah, so we have two questions. Mr. High Octane, are there any negatives to running 20% rather than 30% nitro fuel in the high end nitro engines, such as OS, Novorossi, Orion? What about oil content? Nine versus eleven, twelve percent. Thanks. Nitro content and oil content, higher end engine. So I guess it's assuming like what would be like. Well, Novorossi isn't around too much anymore, or Orion. So let's focus on OS. Twenty versus thirty percent, more power versus less power versus yeah, more, I mean- more runtime. 25 and 30% when you have more nitro versus like the 12 we have in Europe, for example. Right. It's a noticeable difference in power. Uh, the more nitro, the engine... Or between 20 better. and 30? Do you notice it? I've never run 20. Okay. 25 or 30. Not, yeah. Don't really notice much, but like 12 to 25 or 12 to 30, yeah. Yeah, you notice. So the engine just runs much better, idles better, doesn't flame out as easily. It's easier to tune and you have more power. So it's a no-brainer. So running less nitro like we have to do now in Europe is, in my opinion, a really bad thing because for the races, you have to have a new or very or engine in very good condition so it's reliable mm-hmm. because as soon as you start losing compression, you run a risk of flaming out. It's just like the car just flames out. Like why? You don't know. Uh, that's gonna be a problem if we keep going like this unless of course they develop the engines for that fuel so i don't know what they would have to do but maybe there's something they can do to um, develop the engines so that they run better more reliably Mm -hmm. on Mm -hmm. on this fuel what about the oil content nine versus 11 and 12 that has something to do with power and fuel time as well uh, if you can have a bit of castor oil in the fuel, that seems to be good because it helps to protect the engine. So mm-hmm. the engine will last longer. If it runs too hot for a bit, it doesn't you know, destroy the engine. There's just an extra layer of protection if you have a bit of castor. And more oil, up to a point, of course. But normally, if you have two options, like less oil and more oil, the more oil will be... The safer option. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, definitely the safer option. Less oil can have a better performance, like, or maybe you can uh, get a bit more runtime or a bit more power, but it's not really worth it. You want an engine to run cool, reliable for a long time, so then you would pick the fuel that has a bit more oil and a bit of caster. That's really the, the best, uh, safest option, I would say. Sweet. And last question comes from Chris Vegas. Why no Mugen and RCGP? You know what I'm going to say to him? Ask Mugen. Er, er. Time out. Time out. 
I know JQ says he didn't have time for a rant, but this actually turns into a full scale rant. So I'm going to cut it right here. We're going to go on to the Techno RC main interview with Mark Santa Maria. Also, thank you to everybody that sent in questions for the Beach RC Bench Racing Q&A. If you guys can, use the affiliate link. It's in the written description of this podcast to help us out a little bit. And keep sending those questions. But right now, we're cutting JQ off at his rant. We're going to go into the Mark Santa Maria podcast. And then we'll come back to this rant at the end of the podcast. With that said, thank you, Techno RC, for the continued support. Here is the main interview with the YouTube sensation, Mark Santamaria of MSN Vlogs. Techno RC. Techno RC. Techno RC is a premium manufacturer specializing in 8th and 10th scale high performance off road RC buggies and trucks. Visit www.technorc.com for a complete catalog of their products. Techno RC. Excellence in engineering. Hashtag Techno Takeover. This man to my retro left, yeah, he doesn't need any introduction. Uh, Mark Santa Maria of MSN Vlogs. What's up, dude? How are you? What's up, man? What's up, guys? Lefty, how are I, you, sir? I'm good. I'm admiring your your wall of Traxxas behind you, and I think uh, some other various <laughs> other kits that you have there. I have so I haven't broken up. Like these are all my Horizon kits on this side, but that's not behind me. And then I have all my Traxxas kits back here. So people think, oh, he's a Traxxas fanboy. All he has is Traxxas. I just have it all separated. And then I have a Tamiya wall over here. I don't. Dude, what I, I need to do is like, <laughs> I have a lot of Tamiyas. Uh, what I need to do is like revolve my desk so that way the background changes. That was the original plan. It just it didn't come to fruition. So, do you throw away boxes? Um, I do. Okay. I I throw away so. A little, a little uh, secret, a little secret hack. If you're trying to build like a soundproof studio where there's not a lot of reverb, the boxes actually absorb a lot. You so. know, <laughs> I, I ask this because you have a lot. Of, I, I don't. I, all my action. I don't throw away any boxes for some reason. Uh-huh. I don't throw away any boxes. I collect boxes. I have all of on her. All of my action figure boxes are all on her, hidden away from my wife, so she can't <laughs> see these when they come in. <laughs> All that good stuff. But um, welcome, Mark, to the podcast. We were chatting a couple of weeks ago about your spec slash, which I thought was great. We're going to get on a, lo- a little bit about that. First off, congratulations to you on 90K. I think the last time you was on her, you just went 80 or, or was about to go 80. Yep, like 75, 80, something like that. I know how difficult that is. I'm so happy with my 3,127. <laughs> And I'm trying to grow it, but um, congratulations on that. That's uh, another accomplishment for you. 100K, probably not too far off. Uh, I've been absorbing a lot of your content too as well. I really like the swap meets. We're going to talk about that. And yeah, I got to see you at Silver State, you and I met your wife yeah. finally, and you was enjoying yourself there. That's good because you should enjoy yourself. Okay, and, can I um, say something real quick? Yeah, sure. Of course. Congratulations to you. I think you've done Ooh. just an amazing job. And coming from someone who has started a podcast, a race podcast, especially. And and for you guys who don't know, race podcasts are really hard because racers are probably the most critical, <laughs> most <laughs> the hardest people to please in the RC community. Uh, you've done an amazing job. When I was listening to the Worlds, I was like, man, this dude's made it. He's in the announcer's booth at the Worlds. Like that would have been an on the tone dream. Um, but congratulations uh, to everything you. you guys have done. So thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I like I, I was telling you, I appreciate how hard it is to make content. So yeah, I I I look at I look at what you do and I'm just like, wow, this guy doesn't stop. He's pushing out three videos a, a week. He's there, he's doing this. I don't know, like like do you just have like Red Bull and your coffee every morning? Is that what you drink all day long? Also, I, I've kind of like built this this lifestyle where I, I feel like everything that every minute of the day I have to be doing something. And I don't know. I, I guess it's I'm either working. And if I'm not working, like if I ever catch myself sitting in front of the TV or watching videos on my phone, which I'll still watch videos because I get kind of some inspiration mm-hmm. and it motivates me a little bit. Um, a, a saying pops up in my head, create, don't consume. And I every time I do it, that's what pops up in my head. So 
as soon as I start kind of relaxing, I keep saying that saying in my head and I'm always, you know, running and gunning and creating and creating is easy whenever you enjoy it. Right. Right. Um, and even, and I talk about this on my, my, uh, my YouTube channel all the time. Even if I try to take a break, like if I told you left out, I'm going to be, I'm done recording. I'm not going to record for a couple of weeks. I would walk down into the garage and start wrenching on an RC car. It's like, well, that's what my channel, <laughs> that's what my channel does. So I might as well just turn the camera on and go. So it's easy whenever you really enjoy and you have a strong passion for what you do. So, yeah. And you know what? Um, I think the last time you was on her and since I've, we've been talking, I've kind of changed my mind on a lot of things. Like I now preach the whole, we need, we have this whole bash of things we need to get racing. So I, I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm, you sold me on that. I believe in that 100%. Um, and I've, I am, I too am looking to enjoy RC again and yep. doing RC again, because I've been doing this and I love going to these races and stuff, but I don't get to do RC and not necessarily racing, but I have found myself with a new respect and wanting to do bashing now. So I'm, cons- now I'm the opposite. I'm consuming a lot of, <laughs> most of my content that I consume is bashing content. I'm not going to lie. So I'm watching <laughs> right. I'm watching you. I love your swap meets and stuff like that. I, and your race stuff. I watch this guy, Kamikaze RC. I think that's his name yep. on Instagram, who does all these badass tricks. Like with his yeah, car. And I'm just like, this is freestyle stuff. RC right here. Right. And I, I just love RC when I try to consume as much as I can. But, but it's I'm, especially hard for you because when you go to races, that's as much as you don't want it to be your job, it's it's your job, right? Yes, you, it is. You want to be, you want to cover as much stuff. Like, how frustrated would you be if you were on the stand racing and you found out some drama broke out in the pits and you weren't there? I know. <laughs> you don't want to take that risk. I know. So it's it extra is. extra hard for you. Or, or for me, like, because I've built uh, a following really behind bashing and just RC enthusiasts in general, I can actually take my day off and race. Like, I still do racing content, but I don't feel mm-hmm. like I have to be recording every waking minute when I'm at a race, you know? Right. So how is that going? Because you are, I, I've been watching your videos. So every, you've been to a lot of the race time races this year. You came to Silver State. Silver State was a little different. You know, you don't have your, your camp and all that set up, but you was kind of pitting with the techno guys, but you have the MSN vlogs tent up. You seem to have a, a good group of people under there. Each race, you have a lot of people following. The most important thing is the, the videos that I do watch. There's a lot of comments. There's a lot of people following what you guys are doing, which I like. Because that's all racing content right there. Mm-hmm. How's that going? How are you, are you starting to get people that maybe were a little bit nervous about going to these type of races oh, now yeah. coming out to oh, these yeah. races? So the whole purpose of the me setting up and me trying to be kind of right in the middle of everything when it comes to the MSM compound, the tent mm-hmm. on the tone. Like if you've been to the race time events, I actually probably MSM probably has the biggest area. We usually have about twenty by twenty and and like prime pit area. And the whole purpose of that and, and Dave is is. He, he understands this and he, he helps me out with this, but, and Dave, Dave, Dave being Dave, like him because mm-hmm. we're trying to open it up where you don't need to be intimidated by all these pro drivers, all these hardcore racers, uh, come in there, you know, hang out with the MSM compound. We're bashers. We're just out there to have fun. You can pit right in the middle of everybody, meet everybody. And, and for the most part, all these racers are super nice. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and they feel welcome. I want them to feel welcome. I don't want to feel it like it's like an elitist community. Um, so that's why I try to bring the biggest presence I possibly can at these races. That way it welcomes more people into racing. Yeah. I mean, we need that. And I, I think we look at the numbers for like e truggy and e-buggy at PNB and mm-hmm. a lot of the race time, I have to say race time because they have the biggest e-buggy e-truggy, but e-truggy was amazing. Like, it's crazy. I blame no, I you for that. I, didn't think I blame you for that. that. <laughs> I blame you for that, but I want to e-truggy now too. They, they are nice. They are fun. That's growing. I, I remember when you started that, uh, you was one of the first guys. And I was like, E-Truggy, what is this guy talking about? I'll never forget when he said that. I was like, E-Truggy, no, we're not going to have E-Truggy. But, hey, I like it. So so I let like me it. ask you this. You just got back from overseas. Do you see E-Truggies over there? Or are they no. like, get, get that out of here? <laughs> no, they don't. Um, I think in England they do Truggy a lot. But the majority is America, South America, um. I know they're gonna. There's talk of being a having an e buggy worlds next year, so that's oh, a, nice. a step in the right direction, and I think it's gonna be in Portugal. That's the that's the word on the street anyway. But that's a great a great step in the right direction because e buggy, as I say, it pays the bills and everybody. That's a that's the gateway drug right there. I think for everybody to get into racing, 
So yeah. uh, good and, stuff. And e Truggy e Truggy is really good because you know the some of the bigger bashers are going to be like your Revos, your Creightons, those kind of cars, right? And they're essentially um e, like they're like e truggies right so if you're a basher you're going to be most familiar with that type of platform right mm-hmm. um and then if you want to race with it obviously you can race with they're super super fun to race with which i'm sure you've driven e truggy before if you haven't you need to try it um but if you're done with it put some freaking monster truck tires out there and just make it a basher it's going to be one of the most durable bashers on the market so yeah so, I, you know i'm building i've I'm, I'm f- finished building my techno truck um nice. I'm just waiting for some few parts on it. My first techno kit that I ever built. Thank you, Matt, and thank you, Danny, for the um, for the. You was there when I got it, so oh, yeah. Um, I was like, "Did you bring that for me?" They're like, "No, that's for <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, seriously?" <laughs> I do like it. Um, these I think these like I like this freestyle stuff. I think I'm gonna try it, and um, yeah, it's a really good piece of kit. I've enjoyed. I think I heard a static noise. It's a uh, sorry. I just heard something in my 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 my. Oh, there we go. Is it me? Is it me? No, it's me. My electricity went off. So look, I live in the DR. My electricity went off, and then I'm on Inverta, so I have a little static. So if you heard oh, that little bit of static, that's what it is. So I'm really enjoying that. I'm gonna have that together when I come back from RCGP and Beach RC in two weeks' time. Uh, I gotta get a few more parts for that. Uh, but yeah, man. Uh, been consu- what I really want to talk to you about too is your swap meet stuff because I am definitely yeah. geeking out on that. Is that they're, something they're that happens still- on the regular? So people always ask me, they're like, how do you know about this? They think that I'm like hiding these. <laughs> uh, honestly, it's just in my area. They're they're big. And right. I would I would like to think that me doing those vlogs has a tendency to make it a little bit bigger in my area because they see them here. And I know people are traveling out and they've seen it on the vlogs. So they're coming out. But just like our, our Moonlight Crawler events, like mm-hmm. every swap meet is like the biggest swap meet we've ever had. And it's great. And they do it at a perfect time, right? Like you don't want to do swap meets every week because people just run out of used stuff to sell. But it's like they wait just long enough where when people are out there selling stuff, they're so motivated to sell and you just get some killer deals. And there's something about getting a killer deal on a car versus buying it. It's just so much more <laughs> so much hey. more satisfying. <laughs> well, see, I watch a lot of the action figure stuff and they do a lot of that type of stuff going around wheeling and dealing. That's something else yeah. I want to talk to you about. Um, and so I, re- that really hits home for me. I see stuff like, oh man, I haven't seen one of them in a long time. Oh, that looks cool. Look at that blast yeah. from the past. And I'm just sitting like, oh man, I, I'm so glad I don't go. Th- if I had money, I'd spend it all her. You know, I definitely <laughs> spend it all. Some good deals, some good stuff. And I really enjoy those videos, man. Keep them up. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I'm trying to split them. Cause I, I get so much content at those, mm-hmm. at those swap meets. Like I can get an hour of content at that swap meet, Right. And I try to keep my videos within 10 minutes. So I'm like starting to break them up more um, and just kind of let everyone see. Like usually in the past, I would cut out some parts that I don't think are that interesting. But what I realized is what I don't think is interesting, people think is really, really interesting. So I'm trying to leave it all in there and then just let you guys just watch the swap meets because, man, there's so many crazy gems <laughs> in those swap meets. It's, it's absolutely insane. So these look, they have look like they have a good bit of people there. Is, um, mm-hmm. is, how does this work? Is there somebody organizing them? Do they happen elsewhere? Like, I mean, yeah, they, there's a, there's a couple of uh, people that organize them. Um, there's a guy in my area. His name is Rob. He's a big reseller, right? He buys a lot of car lots and then sells them off. So he mm-hmm. really kind of pushes them because he does a lot of business at them. But as he's pushing them, um, you know, everyone else is showing up to these things. So yeah, there's usually one or two guys that are kind of really pushing those things. I'm not behind it at all. Like seriously, I just see when it when it pops up and it will just pop on my on my Facebook feed. People, again, there's this misconception that I have like this intel on swap meets. I <laughs> they just they literally just pop up. You know how sometimes your phone will listen to what you're saying and the right. feed will just get flooded. <laughs> like I think that's what happens. Like I say swap meets so much that it just pop like things just start popping up in my live feed, but there's a couple of promoters, like swap meet promoters in my area that are doing a good job. One of them's tailored towards planes, but now they're seeing the the huge car group. Um, mm-hmm. And the other one is is targeted strictly towards cars. So what's crazy is you're starting to see, uh, at first it wasn't very many race stuff, racers out there. You're starting to see more racers come out. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's actually really good for the racing community, right? Because people are able to get second hand stuff. stuff yeah exactly yes so there, i was helping a guy that i met at the track uh, not that long ago uh his name is, is trip and he was going out there looking for race stuff and i was kind of showing him around like yeah that's a good deal that's a good deal 
Um, but yeah, it's it's growing the community. I mean, those those swap meets are are just freaking awesome. I mean, you're moving the stuff. People are moving the stuff they don't want, and you're enabling people who don't have stuff yet. So, yeah, you uh, let, let's knock off a couple of things that you've been busy doing. You done a summer camp, like a, a, a slash summer camp. Yep. Sometime this summer. That's your, I think your second That's or third my, time. Well, I've, had, I've had third. I've had three of them. I did two this year. I did one. One of them was supposed to be a TRX four camp. We were supposed to build mm-hmm. crawlers. Um, but the TRX four, I'm, I'm, it's trying to, I'm trying to tailor it and package it up where it's like a towards maybe father sons that want to, you know, do a camp together because it's mm-hmm. cool for dads, obviously, but also cool for kids. Uh, so I try to keep the price point relatively low. And, uh, unfortunately with a TRX four, there's just, there's no, <laughs> is a low, a low price point on that one. So we did two slash camps, which the slash camps are really fun because I'll bring in racers like Jared Wiggins, Tyler hooks has come in before. Uh, Mike Battelle, and you know they'll kind of talk about their race experiences, but essentially it's it's just like if you were in the pits working on an RC car, and that's kind of like the environment I'm trying to bring to those things, so people feel that way. Like you know, just hanging out in the pits is just amazing, right? And just wrenching on cars and just talking to people, and that's like what the summer camp is. But whenever people have questions, you know, there's experts there to help, and yeah, it's it's great uh, so far. Like basically every the the big misconception is. Oh, it's a kid summer camp. The first two summer camps were more adults than kids, probably 75% adults than kids. Uh, this last one were, was mostly kids, which is which is great. Um, but there were a few of them that came out to the, the Spec Slash Racing Series. Uh, we do the, the the big camp that we have is a Slash camp. And I, I do the Slash because it's very versatile, right? Uh, you can actually go race it. Um, it's a good basher car. And the other thing that's awesome about the Slash is it holds value really well. So if you decide to move on or it's not something you want to do, you can pretty much almost get most of your money back whenever you really? move on with it. You know, yeah, dude. They, I mean, they. I think they retail for two hundred, um, and you can pretty much if you have one in good condition and you have like some extra parts or maybe a battery or something, you can get you can dump it for one hundred fifty bucks to lose okay. fifty dollars on a car. I mean, especially when it comes to the racing world, like that's unheard of. <laughs> <laughs> racing world, yeah. you're, you're losing every you're losing 90 percent of what you put into that thing right yeah you so. buy lots too i saw where you had bought a big lot from somebody you got like a fifth scale car is that something you do a lot of too yeah so i did that i bought that lot originally for content like people mm-hmm. like to watch rebuilds uh, they like to they, just like you know going through swap meet stuff uh, i bought it for content it was strictly a content uh, investment. Now there were a lot of cool things in that lot, so I was able to recoup a lot of what I invested in it. Um, but it's not something that it's not the business I want to be in, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's a lot of work. Like I'm still I still pay for a storage unit, my, which I would pay for a storage unit anyways. But this one's a little bit bigger because of all that stuff I bought. So it, it cost me to to, <laughs> to hold it. So it's not the business I want to be in. If I find something really really good, um, and I can't pass it up, I'll I'll pick it up. But other than that, yeah, it's it's fun, but it's a lot of work. It is. I watch again. I keep going back to the action figure stuff because a lot of the stuff you do. I watch this guy. He does that. Buys these big lots, GI Joe stuff, all this stuff. Cleans it all up, sells it. It's it's a lot of work. It's a, it's, it's fun. But it is great content though. Oh, it's great. Content. It. If you if you put your time into it, not only are you getting content, but you're making money on what you. So you're basically you know doubling your your revenue stream by buying that lot and making content on it. So that's what I did at first when I did a lot of the storage unit content. Um, now it's just kind of there. I pretty much went through most of it already. Well, you're so busy too. Cause you have like yeah. a real job. You have a family. I do. You know, your wife have, helps you out a lot. She does, but now she has her own business. So she, she bought, uh, she has like a well, she bought a wellness studio uh, downtown. So she does like uh, like yoga, Reiki classes, things like that. So she's, she's running her own business. Mm-hmm. So she's been super busy. Um, I, yeah. So now I'm pretty much doing it by myself, but she helped a lot whenever I first got started. Yeah. And your sons, they still into it. RC wise is your son. I know I've been following people been following him racing wise, but as we talked, they're getting older now. So they're getting, they're getting older. So my, my oldest son, my 13 year old, he's the one with the kind of the, kind of the raw talent. Um, mm-hmm. I say raw talent. He, it was like a, a light switch, you know, when that transition between being 11 and like a, a kid into a young man, I guess something clicked like the maturity level quick clicked. And he, he literally went from being a C main to a D main sportsman driver to being the guy that should win the sportsman. That's <laughs> right. Like he, he's crushing it. Right. Right. Um, he's just, he's just got another level of dedication and maturity. Now he, he understands that it's not about 
just going really fast in the corner. It's really controlling your car. Now, with that said, he's he's getting caught up in the school thing, which is great, right? But he's really big into his school sports, uh, the social aspect. So I don't see him racing as much as I would like him to. However, he still enjoys it. He just bought he he bought himself a nitro buggy. Um, oh, good good for him. So, good for yeah, him. so he he like he likes to buy his own stuff because he doesn't want me to like kind of overtake every <laughs> everything. So he wants to be able to have some leverage there. Um, now my youngest son, he's the one that I did a video on the eight year old beats all the pros. Um, he has an incredible amount of like his, his, uh, reflexes are insane. That, right. that race where he was beating everybody was a, a mini Z race. And the reason why I feel like he was so great at that race, is because on mini Z, you can literally just pull the trigger all the way and then just steer it. Right. And, uh, he did really, really well. Uh, he's also a very good racer. He's into it. So I'm, I'm probably going to see him. Um, climb up a little bit. Uh, hopefully, mm-hmm. they'll uh, race a little more. They actually want to go to the track more than me. Uh, <laughs> like, what the, tracks now, are nearby you, by the way? Indy, Indy RC okay, World. Is gonna be the clo- you. Is, that, that's going to be the closest one that we have. A number one air raceway and then Shaw's. Um, but they're you know they want to club race all the time. Uh, I'm I like club racing a lot, but it's it's kind of it's hard because how do I how do I put this without? And I'm sure you guys have all experiences, you race with all experiences. You have these guys that basically live at your local track, which is great, right? You need them to live at the local track, support the local track. But you end up getting, like, they have a significant advantage because they've done millions of laps on this thing. You know what I'm saying? And right. it's, it's it's kind of demoralizing, right? Because I'll go out there. I don't race. I race a lot of national races. I've did, been doing more club racing, uh, been doing better. But I'll go out there and just get straight demolished by these guys. They've got a 1,000 laps on the track. It's hard to compete with these dudes, um, and th- and they're fast, right? But then if we go to like a national race where it's a new track, a new surface, I'll I, I typically finish better than the guys that usually beat me on the local track. So it's kind of it's kind of demoralizing sometimes when I go club racing. So I, I'm not as motivated to do it. And then also because you know people know me through the channel, you know they're quick to say, "Oh, I beat Mark Santa Maria," and it's like, dude, I, I don't go up. <laughs> You're the gatekeeper. Like You're the gatekeeper. <laughs> no guys, got to beat I, you. I, I feel like I'm like the uh, I'm like the Mustang of the the real car race world. Like if you're slower than the Mustang, you're dog slow. But if you're faster than the Mustang, you're considered fast. I'm like right there, right? Um, but I wish I could spend more time out there and 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 really tune in my cars. But it's a, it's an hour it's an hour each way, right? So it's two hours out of my day. And I mean, you see how much content I put out, how many things I'm doing, and that's just what you see on the front end, like all the social media things all my, like my retail store, all my other revenues, like I, I have to, you know, focus on, right? So I don't, it's hard to just put a, put aside two hours a day to go, you know, get to the track and come back. So it's yeah, hard. But you used to, to race a lot at Indy before. <clears throat> uh, I used to race a lot. Day. Is, Are I they did. racing regularly there still? Oh no? yeah. And dude, their, their club races are freaking awesome. Like I, we, we joke around because we call it <laughs> for a while, we called it the e-buggy Nats, like every Tuesday. Right. Because it was like Jared Jared Wiggins, uh, Tyler Hooks, uh, Hunter LaFlower, Jake French, like all the guys that would typically win our, our regional pro races or club racing on Tuesdays. Like if you made the A in that class, it was it was a it was a major accomplishment. So yeah, it, it turned out like it's it's still really good. We get about sixty, almost sixty entries every Tuesday night. Okay, that starts at seven thirty. So it's um it's pretty busy. But uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I I did watch one of your videos where you're kind of pursuing the joy of racing again, learning setup and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I know with all the content you're doing, you haven't done much racing since for a while either because you've been well. You had your spec slash gun as well, which we're going to touch on. But uh, how yep. about that side of things? Because I know how it is. Like you get busy doing this type of stuff and race. Like for me, racing's gone. I don't do it anymore. I hope to do it one day. Uh, how's that working out for you? Well, uh, honestly, there's really nothing behind the reason. There's no reason behind me not racing as much other than there's just not, there's not very many races that I want to go to right now, mm-hmm. like big races I want to go to. Um, so like right at, at the beginning of the year, there's a whole bunch of great ones, right? You have, <laughs> you have, you got uh, SIC. Yeah. You, got you have, well, you have DNC, but you didn't go, but you weren't there, but, but, but there, it's there, right? Mm-hmm. It would be a race that I would go to if I didn't have uh, several that I'm going back to back because right after that is PNB. Mm-hmm. And then right after PNB is probably one of my most favorite races ever, which is the one I saw you at Silver State. Right. And then, 
you have us uh, southern um, nats wicked, wicked weekend southern nats so basically the first part of the year is such is uh, such a rigorous race schedule right so much traveling and like near the, you know the middle of summer it's it's hot i, I kind of slow down a little bit and now like other than ams like ams is the one that i kind of want to go to but i can't because i have a spec slash race at, at that time you know near the end of the year with with a family it's it's kind of hard to find that time right so there's nothing like i don't I don't intentionally try to like slow down my racing. Like if there were more bigger races, there's just not as many near the end of the year, you know? Right. AMS would be a good race. It'd be capped. I think, um, yeah, we enjoyed it last year. We was able to do a lot of virtual coverage for it as well. Yeah. Like Max and I. So we enjoy doing this. Type. We geek out on that type of stuff, like breakdown video I, and all that. There. I have never been to AMS. <laughs> I went to it when it was uh, in June and it was really hot. Yeah. Yeah, it's really dude, hot. Up super there in hot. Coleman, Alabama. Yeah. It's very hot. I just, I just, dude, it's like one of those things where whenever I go to races, and you know this, uh, after seeing me at Vegas, like I try to take it as a vacation, also. So, like, I, I like, I want to go places that are a lot of fun. So, Vegas is super fun. I actually really like the area where Psycho Nitro Blast is. Mm-hmm. Um, that that Pigeon Forge area, Gatlinburg. Those those are amazing areas, especially with the family. Um. And then there's just you know with sick that's one that's in uh, that's in Alabama, that right six in Alabama, yes, I think so. Yeah, six in Alabama. So the fact that AMS is in Alabama also, dude, there's nothing around there. I've been there. There's, there's, there's nothing, nothing around, around there. there. <laughs> like the, like if it were if it were somewhere that was was super like super cool that I don't go very often, um, maybe I would. I, the race is amazing, right? Mm-hmm. I, I think that they how they change the race format, it's awesome, dude. I like every time I go to a race time event, it's it's like seeing my family again, right? It's like my family away from home. So it's I I love those events. I would go to them, but it's it's really hard to convince my wife. Let's take the entire family out to a race in Alabama again. You know, after we've already been there, after we've been there a couple of times. She's been Vegas. She's like, yeah, I'm in Vegas. Yeah, because she enjoyed Vegas too. I I mean, it's the most convenient race out there, to be honest. Oh yeah, dude, it's it's freaking awesome. And like I, I, I think I said it on the last time I was on the podcast, like I try I try to to minimize the amount of time I'm on the track and maximize the amount of time I have <laughs> to see Vegas whenever I'm out there. It's it's not for racing when I go out there. It's it's really that's like my vacation time, right? But yeah, it's it's just it's just a fun race. When do you take some off time from this? Because you have a full time job. You know, mm-hmm. do you take some off time? Because it doesn't seem like it. Um so that's the weird thing is like, so like this weekend we're going on a, on a, like a mini vacation, um, to an R like a really nice RV resort. We do a lot of RVing. Um, but by when we're doing that, I'm also shooting content from uh, my other channel. <laughs> so you have another channel. Oh I, yeah. I your another, traveling channel. Yeah. My, my traveling, ch- which I just re I just rebranded that one to like, M- it, it's called MSM every day. We do a whole bunch of cool things like as a family. Right. And like I, I was like, why don't I just share that? instead of trying to, you know, make myself travel all the time. So I just change it to MSM every day and you get to see kind of the, the cool things that we do. Like recently we went and, and went to this Andretti go-kart track. It's like a three level go-kart track. Like it was, it was a cool go-kart track. So why not share it on YouTube? So we're doing stuff like that now, not just travel stuff, but going back to the question, I do take vacations, but whenever I take that time, I end up recording anyway. So is it really a vacation? I, I can't help but do you're never off really you're like me you're never off never <laughs> off i can't never it's off. weird never off go Great. sleep on wake up on that's how it is for me thinking 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 i understand that and then um, sometimes it's hard it's hard to sleep because you're just thinking about yep. what you could be <laughs> yeah i know all about that i know all about that all about that man my brain the things that go through my brain before i go to sleep i don't know i don't know a, a lot of it doesn't make it out but that's how it, it happens all right. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about something that I thought that was really cool. Um, you started your spec slash race series. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's break that down so people can understand because I think it's a great initiative. I'm a big supporter of spec slash as well as a, a newbie, novice. Not even just that, but for people to have fun with. You've kind of took it to a, a different level. I have not seen any of your lives. Uh, one live I did say, one guy was talking about your, your tech guy. He was checking his checking diffs. He's got a diff, um, yeah, a diff, diff analyzer, diff analyzer. So and he's doing diff tags and stuff like that. Yeah, tell us a little bit about this this race this race series you got going on the different levels because there are different classes. You had yeah. a great turnout for the first race too. 
Yep. So uh, first off, thank you for the recognition. I so many people messed me. Oh, look, No Name Podcast gave you props on the Specs last year's race. Uh, thank you for that. It it was it was an but amazing. It's good. Thing. It's great. It, it is. I mean, we had ninety. It was. I think the total was ninety three entries, and and like you said on that podcast, fifty percent of them were new entries into the system. Uh, we sold out of transponders. Like wow. those kind of things were happening. Like people were buying, trying, trying to search for transponders. Many people were getting into the hobby, right? So kind of the, the whole thing behind it is I used to race spec slash. That was actually the first class I ever raced. And I've seen it where it was extremely competitive, even with the highest skilled drivers. Uh, but also it's easy to get into. It's, it's cheap, right? So there, there it's a, it's a race class that can basically satisfy all levels of drivers. Mm-hmm. And, I took a huge risk because obviously a lot of these races, when you promote a race, having multiple classes is kind of how you up your entries, right? Where I did this race, <laughs> I did a race where not only is the entry cheap, uh, entry fee cheap, but there's only one class. So you really can only enter. So where I have a hundred people, a hundred mm-hmm. cars entry entered, that's almost like a hundred people there. Right. Right. Versus like a normal well, there's race teams have, too, right? Yeah. So, so right, going okay. into the, like the, going into the classes, um, so we have a S3, S3 is short for spec three. We have S3 class, which is just beginners. Like okay. you're new to it. Um, you went and bought a slash. You have to take the car out of the box and run it how it is out of the box. You can't do any type of tuning, anything. It's just run it. Right. Um, but it's, it's, it's very much for the people who want to try racing and just go out there and do it. Mm-hmm. Um, what the, the cool thing about spec three is it has the best prizes. Like that. To, oh, like really? Every the top five of the at the end of the season, the top five is getting a brand new Traxxas kit. Like wow. it's just like they're getting the best prizes. They have the best chance of winning the the door raffles, like we do door prizes. And S three guys get three times as many tickets as an S one guy. So for a for a new racer, like it's like a racer's paradise, right? Okay, giving back a lot. Yeah, yeah they're they giving have, them back they have, a lot. They have so much chance of winning all this stuff. Um, they're able to race, and it's super cheap to get into it. And you're not uh, undated with all this. How do I tune this? How do I tune this? What tires do I run? You know, all that stuff. That's that's out the window. It's just go out there, race, have fun. So there's S3, which is like your beginner class, and then we have an S2 class, which are like your normal racers, like your your season racers, right? So you'll have such a wide range of skill there. You'll have sportsman drivers in there, open drivers in there. But what's important is they're out there having fun, right? And they also have a good chance of winning some cool stuff. And then the prize for the S2 class is probably the coolest thing, um, which I should have brought it up here because I have it downstairs. We, I actually have a custom made, like a heavy brass leather W, like a wrestling belt, oh, like, really? like this big for the, the champion of the S2 class. So <clears throat> the S2 class, you can, you can argue has as much skill as my S1 class, which Going on to the S1 class, that's just like F1. Ten teams. Um, each team has a, a actual sponsor. You can't have like just a random, you know, mm-hmm. Yo- YOLO team or whatever. They actually have a, a, a sponsor that does business. Um, <clears throat> and it's got three racers per team. Only two can race. Two racers and a backup. So it's just like F1. Point system just like F1. Um, it's, it's like F... And the way these guys are doing it are like F1. Like you'll go into the pits... There's sections of of each team where they're all wearing the same stuff. You know, mm. they're trying to help their teammate. It's it turned out amazing. So what's great about the S1 class is not only are they are you having you have the best drivers because these sponsors are actually picking the drivers, right? <clears throat> but if you're an S1 driver, you didn't pay to get in there because your team is already bought, right? You literally just get asked. But it, as a racer, you can win a significant am- amount of money. I'm paying back. I think it was something like 80% of the actual revenue that comes in for the S1 class back to actual prize money. So <clears throat> you have Jared Wiggins in there, right? <laughs> He's, I saw you have uh, Boudreaux in there too. I haven't uh, seen him Boudreaux, for a long time. Oh, dude, Boudreaux's, Boudreaux's so fast. You have Spencer Klein in there. Um, we have a lot of really, really good racers in there. And the racing in there is super tight. Like when I say super tight, I mean, I think the top three guys in qualifying were – Maybe maybe three seconds uh, apart. I mean, it's super tight. And then qualifying is just like F one, fastest lap. And then really, you know, we start, yeah, we start with twenty drivers. And quick Q two, we we trim that down to fifteen. And then in Q three, there's only ten. <clears throat> so 
it's really cool. A lot of these, a lot of the racers, at least in my area, watch F1, follow F1. Um, so it's cool to have like an F1 format. But yeah, it's um, are the cars yeah. painted similar too? <laughs> yes, all the uh, so that that was funny that you asked because originally we were like, okay, you know, one or two teams were going to do that. They were going to go all out and pay for custom paint jobs. Well, one team did it. I caught wind of it. I was like, well, I can't because I, I own a team also. I was like, I can't let my team not have matching paint jobs. So I did matching paint jobs. Long story short is I would say almost all the teams have matching paint jobs. It's it's freaking awesome. It's just like F1. It's it's sweet, dude. We did that in RCGP, and I'm not going to lie. The first race or two, it was so hard because it was like one person that would have, would have yellow wheels. The other <laughs> one person would have um, white wheels. It was so confusing. But I think for the person that Kind of tuned in, like we, you know, obviously somebody that's tuned in that doesn't know anything that doesn't know these guys' paint schemes, they're able to pick out which car is who. So that's pretty yeah. cool. Now, so with in the S1 class, can they modify the slashes at all? No, so they there's very small amount of things they can do. They can they can change shock oil, um, and then they can run a different type of compound tire, but it still attracts this tire. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, it really is. <clears throat> driver right um there's some people that are running different batteries which we might do we might change the rule on batteries because i think there's a little bit of advantage you're getting if you're running if you're hot charging your batteries or something right like that. right but, right but for the most part all the cars are, are pretty much the same and i mean it is safe to say jared jared wiggins so he won the first round um spencer klein had the fastest lap the the competition's insane but it is safe to say and i don't think jared will tell you Although Jared won, he, he was not the fastest car. Like you could tell, like on the track, he wasn't the fastest car on the track. Really? Like there are certain things you can do, like breaking your motor. Um, so the really hardcore guys, they buy 15 motors and they test every single one of them and they'll find that one freak motor that's a little bit faster than all the others. Oh, so this is like old school <laughs> stock racing. Oh, dude, it's yeah, it's it's um it's freaking it's it's insane what these guys are doing. Uh, so- they're doing a lot. How's the format for the S1, uh, S2, and S3 guys? It's uh, qualif- regular qualifying, or is it yep. hot lap qualifying? So yeah, regular S2, qualifying. S2 and S3, and the reason why we kept S2 and S3 that way, uh, for S3, we wanted them to experience what it's like in a real RC race program. Okay. Right? So it is just like S2 and S3 are just like a, a regular race program. And then S1 is the only class that's a little different. Um, the thing about S1 and what which I feel like RCGP – should have eventually been doing which this isn't on uh, on you guys as an organizer but like we have a team our shaw's rc team uh robert mm-hmm. shaw owns a team he's the owner of shaw's rc he sold every panel on his truck so it was an x amount to buy his team mm. right but he sold the hood he sold the sides like a real car stuff. yeah like seriously like a real car and right and that's what that's what i think that most teams and it's that's an easy sell to me right mm-hmm especially if you're getting that amount of publicity and for, you know, we're talking hundreds of dollars. We're not talking, you know, tens of thousands. Right. And right. to a business, hundreds of dollars, it's a drop in the bucket. that's nothing. Right. So it's, it's really cool because you know, the, with the spec slash race, it's almost like the companies are funding this amazing race for everyone to grow the hobby. And um, you know but, what makes it good to the slashes? Uh, they look, they look real. So Thank that's you. appealing, and they have the big body, so that's even more appealing for mm-hmm. for everybody. I do like the whole selling the different parts of yes, the that was awesome. like like real NASCAR. Uh, how much? I guess so. You said you got some new people in. So how did you get those people to enter this? Was they just people from your channel, or how much? How did you like? How much would they, okay? So I'm a new person. I want to do this. How much is it going to cost me to enter uh, S3? So it what so it helped a lot. It helps a lot that I buy Traxxas, right? Okay. Um, Traxxas. It it was kind of like this big circle. My biggest viewed videos, my my most viewed videos are my Traxxas retail okay. store videos, and people see my channel. They go into the Traxxas store. When they go into the Traxxas store, Traxxas says, "Oh, you know, you're buying a new car. The Slash. You know, people race it out here. They promote mm. the, the Slash race. <clears throat> people go check it out, and uh, it kind of just works that way, right? It's all really word of mouth." A lot of people are people who race. They have friends that have thought about racing and like, oh, this is the time to do it. It's super cheap and super fun. Um, and it's not, you know, you're not going to be in it really deep before 
you're not going to be in it thousands of dollars. It's it's really realistically, it's about four to five hundred dollars to get okay. into a full race rig, right? Which is is a is uh, it's still expensive, but it's affordable, right? So, how many races are there? There's four. There's only four, but we we started this season near late. the end of the year, yeah, yeah, late, and this was kind of like a pilot to see how it it mm-hmm. was going to go. Uh, next year, we're going to change it up. We're going to have more races. Um, but yeah, it should be a lot like we're learning a lot in these four races and, uh, next year should be bigger. I mean, in the grand scheme, in the grand scheme of things, I would love to have it where it's, it's huge. Like nation. Right. So where, where are the three track four tracks? So you had an Indy the first race and where are the other three tracks? Oh, so that's a, that's an, I'm glad you brought that up. So that's another cool thing about the series is there's actually four completely different tracks. We mm-hmm. have Indy, which is indoor hard pack clay, right. Or the hard pack dirt. A lot of traction, um, not very loamy. And then we have Shaw's complete opposite, oh, really outdoor, afraid. extremely loamy, like track super loose, like it's yeah, it's real backyard off road. And then we have um, at Gold Star. Gold Star is an indoor carpet track, mm-hmm. so completely different format there or different surface there. And then the finals is actually going to be in the parking lot at the tracks' headquarters. Ooh, we're gonna, we're gonna set up a parking lot race. We're gonna have ramps. And we're gonna have parts that probably go into the grass. There's gonna be straightaways that are all the way across the parking lot. <clears throat> it's really? gonna be insane. That's but, cool. Yeah, there's, there's not gonna be like there. We have carpet guys. So Chris Adams, uh, two time national champion on road uh, carpet racer, he's racing the series. I mean, obviously he's gonna excel at the carpet mm-hmm. track, right? Um, <clears throat> so it's gonna be really cool to see the different people how they perform on these different services. And on the last the last live feed, we every kind of like drive to survive. We do kind of a podcast type like live show where we talk about our projections and things like that. And, I need to uh, check Jared, that part out. I, that's the yeah, stuff I pretty, like. <clears throat> excuse me. It's it's really fun. It, I I feel like we like you really have to know the, our community to really mm-hmm. get into it. But like to get to give you an idea, like we were starting to project how we thought the Shaw's race was going to turn out. Jared Wiggins, we all know Jared Wiggins, super fast techno factory team driver. All of us had him at fifth overall. Like we thought he was going to finish fifth. Like if if that gives you an idea how fast these guys are with the slash and how much they're, you know, really how how well they drive at these certain tracks. Um yeah, it's crazy that we we would put a, When is a that race? <clears throat> that race is I think it's the 15th of this month. Okay, so next weekend, next weekend. Yep. All right, oh, that's good, man. I like that. Um, how easy would this be for somebody at a different track if they wanted to do something similar? How could? Um, it would be so. I think it will be super easy now. So the biggest thing about spec slash is trying to come up with one set of rules. Everyone has mm-hmm. their own house set of spec rules, but one of the things that I'm hoping will happen is kind of the MSM spec slash standard will be the standard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. For a track to be able to hop in, it should be relatively easy because they can just grab those rules and and move on with that. Yeah, I think that <laughs> would make fun. a lot. More, yeah, you, you sound like me. That would make a lot more sense, <clears throat> and then you would have some actual <laughs> rules that fo- that are followed along a whole entire across the whole nation at the end of the day for a series so what, like this. What's most important that if like if tracks are listening and they want to get that spec slash class going, you have to get your season racers racing it. I you you know what you have to absolutely because when I was looking at you got Wiggins you got Boudreaux you got this carpet racing guy so yep. there, there's another uh, Katie Carmendi and Race Like a Girl mm-hmm. podcast they're doing this Future Stars of RC stuff which mm-hmm. is really good so they pair up a little bit different from what you're doing they do it like eight scale <clears throat> and they pair local pros up with young racers or beginner racers and then they like mentor them throughout the race and all that stuff. So I agree with you. You have to get the fast local people involved with this because they have to help uh, show some of these new people how to how to race. Like you have to learn too as well. Right. And, and so first off, that concept, amazing concept. I, yeah. I thought about that for a long time, um, about doing something kind of like the ultimate fighter where you mm-hmm. have like basically see how good someone is if they can mentor someone into being a champion. Right. Uh, that's an awesome concept that they're doing. So hats off to those guys for doing that. 
or those gals. Sorry. But it's, <laughs> oh. it's her and her husband. <laughs> okay. uh, husband, husband, wife racing team. You've, you've probably met them. They, they go probably, to a lot yeah. of race time events. So, so the thing is though, like if you, if you truly think about it, you're like, let's say you're just a normal guy that wants to get into something. You don't want to be known as the rookie or in the mm-hmm, beginner class, mm-hmm. right? So if you go out to a track and you see people running slash and they're just beating it up and it's obviously like the, the rookie class, it doesn't look as intriguing as you seeing like this, mm. like several levels, skill levels, and you seeing the fast guys racing this class, right? If I, if I see this super fast guy racing this class, it, it's a little more intriguing for me as someone who wants to be super fast to be able to hop in that class. So that and just getting that turnout there, right? If, if there's always, if, if every track can say, yeah, every week there's a spec slash race at this track, it's going to mm-hmm. be really easy to sell that slash. But it's going to be hard to sell a slash like, yeah, well, sometimes they race it. You just got to hope that there's a class, right? So that's why it's important to get our season racers to race this class. And that's kind of like the whole concept between behind S1 that my S1 class is I knew I had to get the backing from mm-hmm. the super fast guys. And because as you see the super fast dudes in, in your local area running this class, you naturally are like, man, I want to run it too, right? So but it also gives new people a ladder to climb in that class. And and yeah. the cars are still relatively the same, you know, just a little bit of tweaks. Like you said, they change a few things here and there. And so if they want to stick with Slash, they can climb up and go to the S2 class and then hopefully Absolutely. make it to the S1 class eventually. So when, in turn, you've created your own little race system there. Your own little racing. And, and most of the guys are cool. Like, like right. Jared Wiggins will tell you exactly what he's done to his car. Right. <laughs> like he's got he's got no problem. Like he'll tell you, he'll do it for he's a lot going of guys science, man. before you. Yeah, Boudreaux will do the same thing. If you ask, if someone goes ask, and Boudreaux is one of the faster S1 guys, if anyone goes ask Boudreaux, hey, what did you do to your car? I'll be like, here, I'll show you. Like, so you'll really, right. you can really get on the same level as everybody. And there are, there's a guy that's super fast in spec one. I believe he did make it to Q3. He might have finished top 10 that recently just started racing. Mm. He's just a talented guy, right? Really? And I think the more we get those, like, we'll, those people will come out, right? Are yeah, I mean, eventually the goal is to hopefully get them into other racing classes as well, as well yep. as as slash. Uh, but hey, it's once again Traxxas who's and you who's kind of helping develop other things and get more people racing. The company that doesn't race anymore is doing right. a lot more, a lot of a lot for racing, which is amazing because they've done a lot. If you think about it, you go back to Revo, you they, they started the monster truck class, um, they started the slash stadium truck craze, so. Uh, Traxxas has been ahead, has been the leader of a few c- racing classes. And I mean, right. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm extremely humbled that they backed me up on all this. Like they are supporting me all the way through and through. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, they were very like, they don't sponsor races. Right. No. Um, and the fact that they're really just backing my concept here. And obviously it's a little bit easier to back my concept when the only car is a Traxxas car. Right. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, I'm extremely humbled that I have such, good backing with the what's your favorite Traxxas car car. right now oh man you're gonna put me on the spot like that yes you gotta give me one it it changes all the time but right Mm -hmm. now i'm really crazy about crawling and trail riding something about the weather it being fall beautiful weather being outdoors so i gotta go with my trx4 is probably my favorite like all of them are just awesome i I want actually i have most of them but i would have every color of all of them if i could they are nice (laughs) they are nice rigs though they They are are nice rigs <clears throat> I need to get me a Traxxas bashing type vehicle. I don't know what I want though. Um, I want something flesh. big. Yeah, I'm looking at that box like you know, perfect, perfect product placement behind you right there. And I'm like, <laughs> I want a sledge in my brain and saying, I want a sledge. You want a sledge? You want? They're a sledge. on sale right now too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I don't even gonna keep you too long, but we're coming to the end of the year. You had a busy year. We're going into 2023. You're going for 100k. You're busier than ever. What is the future holding for MSN vlogs, and what can we expect in twenty three? In twenty twenty three, dude, you, you want to hear something sad? You know what's like a big driving driving factor for me? Um, you know, at Silver State, me and Scotty Ernest were super cool. Like he'll let me in the booth, and we'll I'll announce races with him or whatever. And uh, I told him that I was going to be at hundred k this year, and I think I'm going to uh... miss it. So like, <laughs> like right now, I think I really am going to focus on trying to build up my subscriber account which is mm-hmm. 
which is is not the greatest thing to do as a YouTuber because as a YouTuber you don't make money on subscribers, right? You make views. money on views, right? Um, so I should be trying. But you to need subscribers views. to get views. So <laughs> yeah, but there's there's so there's huge there's yes. YouTubers out there that are much bigger than me, but get half the amount of views I do, right? Which I much rather be <laughs> getting the views. So it's it's some I've got to, I'm gonna try to switch my focus on gaining more subscribers, mm-hmm. and how I'm gonna do that is I'm probably gonna be doing more shorts. Uh, maybe do more in, uh, more Instagram. I, I'm I'm not a big fan of TikTok. Maybe do some more TikTok stuff. But I'm really going to focus on building, uh, building, making, doing different things in YouTube, like on YouTube for RC. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to be investing in it also. Like I'll be putting, you know, a significant amount of money back into it to try to to try to change it up. I'm not a I'm a, I'm a creature of change. I don't like as soon as I get stagnant. Like right now. Uh, you know, I do a lot of vlogging, like most of my content is vlogging where I'm just kind of doing what I do. And you guys are following along. I'm doing a lot of reviews, but I feel like I got to change it up and do something different that most guys aren't doing. So don't know what that is yet. Um, actually, I have some ideas, but I'm not going to spoil them here, but lots of good things coming. So sweet. Um, real quick before you leave, uh, I was read uh, Wheelers and Dealers. So I didn't know you was a fan of that show. Oh, I was dude, too. Um, and I really enjoyed that show. I didn't know a lot of American people watched it. That's why, because it's an English show. So, uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about that because you kind of wanted to do something like that uh, with with RC Wheelers and Dealers. Fix it up. Get the tall guy to fix it all up, nice and proper. So that was that was an inspiration for initially the inspiration for the channel. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so whenever I was watching Wheeler Dealers, like, dude, this is I love that show, and the fact that you know that it was Ed China was the the first technician that they had fixing the cars. You know how he fixed everything like perfect. He never just patched it up. Like he no. did it all the way. Like it looked brand new. Like it didn't matter if he had to take the entire transmission apart to fix this one little thing instead of just, you know, try to patch it up. He did he did like he never spared any time. He did the the job perfect. And that's kind of like my style in building cars. Like whenever I get a car and like I if I get a Traxxas car, let's say I do a Traxxas Revo rebuild, right? Um Someone might see that the servos, you know, busted. They might throw in a, a cheap Hobby King servo or something like that. I am a little different. Like I like it to be almost as factory and as stock and perfect working condition as possible. So I'll always try to, I'll always try to build it at like a like really high level spec, even mm-hmm. if it costs more. That's what I would want to do. So that's kind of like his style was very similar to mine. And I was doing the same with RC cars, and I was like, man, let's just start recording it, right? So I started tracking some of my rebuilds on Facebook and people enjoyed it. And then that's really when I was like, I'm just going to start doing some of this, some of these rebuilds on the channel. And the channel actually grew. It started on doing these rebuilds, but now it's, it's hard to do rebuilds because it doesn't, it doesn't cover like everybody, right? Like if I do a, a nitro Revo rebuild, a lot of people don't care about the nitro stuff. So mm-hmm. um, I'm trying to just get over that and be like, you know what? I'm just going to do what I want to do because that's how I started the channel in the first place. Um, but at the same time, you, I kind of juggle between, and I'm sure you do the same thing with the podcast, right? Versus the things that you want to talk about versus what people want to see. You know, what yeah. People hear. I, cause yeah, obviously. Cause um, we do, we, we go into 10 scale. I'm starting to like that a little bit more and I'm creating you know, this whole thing between stock and mod in my brain. So I get it, man. Um, the, the, you just got to keep it fresh. And the, the, the rebuilds also take a long time. Where a review time. is like, you know, take it out of the box, go do, go have some, and reviews are fun. Like, you go have some fun with it and do yeah. things like that. Well, yeah, man. Um, work on the subscriber account because that's important. Um, this is like a full time job for you, and you have a full time job. So, oh, yeah. So, I, I understand the, the need to get that. The shorts are good. I do, a, um, I do a lot of that stuff when I go to races, like a lot of Instagram shorts. I do a lot of TikTok stuff because TikTok just crosses right over to Instagram. And yep. and to Facebook somewhat. I wish YouTube was a little bit on that algorithm, but they ain't. But um, all that stuff's good. Like that's the stuff that's gonna get five million views or ten million views from somebody because somebody just saw. Dude, I went to Silver State. The one video that I got to go semi get over hundred k views was some fifth scale car just leaving pit lane. Eight Dude, seconds. it's I I say that I say that all the time. Whenever I do videos, like everyone's like, do race videos, do race videos. The irony is, is I could go to, I could go to the worlds and shoot a video at the worlds 
but it will get half the amount of views as me driving my X Max in the backyard, like running over dog poop or something. You know what I'm yeah, saying? It's like, unfortunate. It's unfortunate. But that's so, how it's it so is. weird how it works. I mean, look at um, Talbot. Like, it's like a three million subs. Like that guy. Talbot. We tried to get him to come out to RCGP. He wouldn't come. I I I think guys like that. He has the power to bring a lot of people into racing too, but he has to enjoy oh, yeah. racing as well. I know he has um, some issues with racing, and everybody. And, I, and then I kind of, when I hear him say what he say, he's saying about it on the bashing side. What you say to me reverberates as well. But um, yeah, he's killing it as well. well his, I watch his him a following. Lot. His following is so big, right? That he he could he could almost drive he could he could almost drive the industry in whatever direction he wants to. Is how big his following is. I think so. I agree with you there. I mean, it's 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 insane, but. What's crazy is he's get he you know he gets I don't know hundred times more views I do right let's say that that means that there's that many people that have no idea that there's these uh, like guys like us out there that are really right. trying to grow the hobby. I, I, how many times <laughs> have I told you like if a thousand of your if a thousand of your subs got into racing right now it would change RC racing. If ten thousand yeah. got into RC it would everybody would be better. But we have to we have to find a way to break. Break that ice. That's why I was like, I I messaged him. My other buddy say, Hey man, we're doing this race at RCGP. It's in England. Come check it out. We'd love to have you. You know, we want to kind of show you that racing can be fun too. And um, unfortunately, though, he's a busy man. I get it. He's a hey, but I love. I watch a lot of his stuff too. So. And dude, so like his his videos though, like don't let it don't let it fool you. He probably has a a pretty decent staff behind making all his stuff. Really, like he's got he's got a very solid production. Like. When I see videos now, I, I think about all the different types of edits and things mm. like people are doing. And it's like, dude, his videos are hardcore. Like those are some really good videos. And people yeah. with just that just watch don't realize that just the things that guys like him do to make videos awesome. Like when you go watch a Mr. Beast video, you probably think, Oh, that's a cool video. What you don't realize is there's probably three hundred people back there making that video awesome. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, when and you have he, subs comps like that, and you're making that type of money off YouTube, you can afford that type of stuff. Oh too. yeah, but it's it's crazy the amount of work they put into it. Yeah, he's yeah he's um like that's obviously where I would like to be, um, and mm-hmm. I feel like there's a there's a gap there. Like I feel like there is a there is a need or a a void of a person like him, like his his type of YouTube channel that big in the states. Like that's he's yeah. Like, I don't know any American guy like that at at that level. Not, you're the closest one I know. The, well, the RC driver online, um, Greg with RC driver online, um, mm-hmm. he's he, him and I are, are kind of go back and forth, not back and forth, like arguing, but like in regards to, to view counts, things like that. His is his channel is very big, but you know, his channel stemmed from the, you know, the, the magazine, I believe, I believe it's mm-hmm. the magazine, but he does a lot of car reviews, right? It's mm-hmm. not vlog style. Um, I'm more of a vlog style. Um, versus, right. You know, I like your style better. Like letting people show you what you and your family is doing. People love that stuff. I feel like it's a little more genuine, but I it is I it's kind of I shot myself in the foot. Like I think, I think uh, Horizon is kind of mad at me right now. Um, oh. <laughs> like so typically I get, so there's like a list, right? There's a list uh, of YouTubers that will get when a new car releases, they'll send it out to these YouTubers, right? Oh, Obviously, right. I'm, I'm on the Traxxas is like YouTuber list, right? So when Traxxas gets a new car, they'll send it usually to me um greg which is rc driver online um and then maybe some of the other bigger uh youtubers or whatever uh so i'm on almost everybody's list except for axial which I don't, like somehow i, I got lost on the list I don't, but that's what How i do get you not have get. like one of those big axials six i games. have i have so i think that's where i got I, so i, I it kind of hurt like it kind of cuts deep whenever i see all the guys get these new cars and it's like i got i got left out of that one so they sent me one of the big scx sixes uh, but on my first drive, it broke, and I was like, "Yeah, this kind of pulled out. That's kind of lame." And I think they didn't like that. I don't know if that's the reason why they stopped sending me stuff. But you're gonna get a cease I'm, and desist, like JQ. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just. But see, it was one thing. Like, I'm not making anything up, right? Right, right. Um, you gotta I, be I, honest. I, yeah, I mean, that, and that's what that's what my channel is based on. Um, because so, that's your integrity. You know, you can't right. you can't sell that. So and there's nothing the, wrong with cars breaking. People think whenever I say cars break, it's dude, every car freaking breaks. You know every car saying? breaks. <laughs> every car every breaks. Every car breaks. Especially if I drive it. I'm gonna break it. <laughs> right. I'm gonna break it. 
But yeah, Axel, get this man on your list. I know, I, saw, I was on their list, and then I, I got dropped off, I guess. Yeah, you, gotta, you, you talked about that pulled out part. That's what it was. <laughs> <clears throat> That's probably what it was. Well, not. I mean, Maltraxis is also a big competitor, but I mean, Horizon is one of the biggest, it, if not the biggest, in in the industry. So, and it helps. So that is right next to me, right? So it's. I mean, that helps. Easy for me. <laughs> that helps. So like, it's like like imagine driving a car, knowing that if you broke something, it it was going to get fixed that day. Like I have that satisfaction driving Traxxas cars because I'm I'm right next to it. <laughs> like it's not far at all. Um, all right. So I I drive more Traxxas cars. It's just because where i'm located hey nothing wrong with that man do what you have to do that's what it is because what you're doing is good and we need you around because we need you to get into that space where kevin talbot and those guys are and then get these people with some eyes on what we're doing here in the I, RC, dude, the are, you, are you gonna cut me short because i want to ask you some questions no actually i just wanted to ask you two more questions and then okay, we'll, okay. And then you could go ahead right, uh cool. the dirty self podcast how oh, i see, you look so nervous i i know how it is you got charlie mac um you got Craig. I think his name Craig Titus. Is he? What, no, no, what's James his name? Titus. James. James sorry, Titus. I, I know why I want to call him Craig Titus. Um, you got James, and then you got Demarco. I can't stop laughing when I go. I can't. Dude, and you're just, I, like those guys are so funny, dude. I, <laughs> they, they, <laughs> I said to I said to Charlie Mac. I said I feel so bad for Mark because he's sitting there and it's just like, like. I, you guys are about to say something really bad, like at any given moment. I don't know, like I know exactly how you feel. It's like when JQ and Max got together. It's like they start feeding off each other and they try do to they? go. I thought they would be buddies. They do, but they try to go one up on, on who can say something worse than each other about something. So then I'm like, okay, I got to keep it under control. Then they start going at each other. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so, dude, so you, so you, you can relate to those guys, and the feedback I gave, and dude, I, I love those dudes, and they're part of the reason why on the tone even came back for a little bit, anyways. Like they wanted to do it right, mm-hmm. um, but it's the hardest part about their group is that they're they talk. It, it's funny, they're super funny, but they they talk a lot about their area, right? Right. So and, people um, don't know. You, you, you tend to only have the focus, like people getting in the area. I'm like, guys, we got to try to figure out a way to make it entertaining for. Not just the people in the south, but everywhere, right? They have, dude. They're super funny guys. If you ever pit next to those dudes, oh man, they like make your me face laugh. will hurt by the end of the day because you're laughing the whole time. Yeah, um, they they crack me up. They crack yeah, me up. They're um, yeah, they uh, I, I, for, for the podcast, I don't care if we, we we've crossed the line so many times on the podcast. Um, sometimes I listen to some old of old on the tones, and I'm like, man, I I I got <laughs> I should take this down. This is just awful, right? <laughs> Because just just the nature of a podcast, you're supposed to be as candid as possible, right? Um, so, like, I I don't know, I I couldn't have a lot of that stuff on my YouTube channel because it's more uh, family oriented. But I love those dudes, man. They're, that there's it's so much fun to do podcasts with those guys. All right. So the second question is: Do you get <clears throat> to her Bobby Moore and Mike Batali Batali Batali? How do you say his last name? Batel. Yeah, Mike Batel. Do you get to hear them re uh, recall their epic? Uh, Nitro Revo battles that they used to have because those two were like two of the best Revo drivers in the world at one point. So every time I they get them in the, I get them in the same spot, I, I always bring it up. I always <laughs> say, "So who's who's the faster Revo driver?" And both of them say, "I was, I was." So apparently, that the true the truth is, Bobby was the first Nitro Revo champion. Okay, and but Mike Battelle is like the rating. He's like the Revo champion. Like Man, Revo was hot. Revo was yeah. RC Pro Series. It was it was Monster Truck. <clears throat> that thing, those little things are fast. But see, like that, like we need. <clears throat> that would be so awesome to get that back because the bashers can relate. Dude, you this know, is you know? this guy had one her in a DR. <clears throat> he sold it. I asked him the other day. I said, "Who who has it? Like, I want to get it. it." Has the old time starter box had a carbon fiber chassis, all that stuff. Oh, dude, that's freaking that's freaking awesome. Badass. All right, you had a few questions for me. Let's go. I, I don't really get asked much questions from my guests, but yes, go. dude. <clears throat> so I'm putting my uh my podcast hat <clears throat> on. So so the podcast, I can tell yeah. you from experience, it's a it's a tough one. It's a tough kind of community to be in. The racing community, and I I realized you talk to me a lot about bringing more people to racing because the racing community is relatively small, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so how do you plan on growing it? How do I plan on growing it? Yeah, it doesn't seem very scalable. I feel like from 
from a no name from from your from a podcast perspective, you've got to unlock in the racing world. But how do we? How do you? How do you grow from here? I don't know. Um, I've been wrestling with that myself. As how do we grow as an industry, as well? Because as the industry grows, so will this. You know, and <clears throat> I look at what you're doing, and I'm like, ah, oh, I see what he's doing. We need to get over there. But it's it's hard. It's hard. Like we need to get them people. We need to be more relatable with, with there. I I just think like I always say this. A lot of people just don't know what we do, you know, know and I run into, I travel a lot and I, I go through airports a lot and I will run into people and are like, we talk, what are you doing? And then I end up telling them what I'm doing. I'm very proud of what I do. So I then end up bringing out videos and showing people and stuff like that. And then it just comes that people don't know, unfortunately. I mean, we're so obscure. We're not even on Netflix, most obscure sports, you know, and we <laughs> think it's about- big. We think it's big because we race and right. we go to these races and there's like 450 people there and this and that. But really, it's it's not as big as we, we think it is, unfortunately, not compared to what you're in. And then, like, I can see where the other bashing guys and other channels are. And I'm like, wow, we're missing out there. And I think, uh, yeah, just collectively, I think collect- collectively... As the industry grows, that's why I'm always pushing for different things. I always say we should do this. We should change this. We should do that. We should do things like this because I want to see everything grow. I want to see racing grow. And to, for racing to grow, it has to be easy, right? So it has yep. to be easy for people to get into it, which I think you do a great job of bridging that gap. You've so, you're like, I'm a big believer in that, bridging that gap from Basha to, to Racer. You do a very good job of that in your videos. More of that's needed. Uh, we need to stop being... I'm not saying everybody's an asshole at races, racers, but you, you know, racers, like we get so caught up. Yeah. And then the first thing we say, look, this car has got $5,000 and I got $10,000 worth of tires over. I'm not going to want to race after I heard that. So yeah. let's stop. Let's, I, I think we need to stop in, in the racing side of things. I don't think these are toys anymore. I know that's, I know, I know a lot of people don't like that. I don't think they're toys when they're racing. And I don't think, the toys when we have guys that get paid to do this for a living. So it's a lot of things for this podcast. I realized that this podcast is only going to go so far because racing is only this big. So we have to grow racing. So I have to push the people that can make racing bigger. So that's, that's, that's the reason why I asked because for, so for me, like I, I know there's a right. huge market out there. Like we see Kevin Talbot, he's doing it. So right. I know that there's a market out there for me. But as a podcast, how, we can't say that there's much more than what we've already tapped into. No, well, that's why I that's why I hope y- your your people when they get into it, right? When yeah. Kevin Talbot's people get into it, this is when they start they get into like what we geek out on, like you know what I mean. Then they start learning more about it's all it's all that's how it goes. Like it's just you know, like you you guys are the people to get them into it. Then we try to we're gonna you know we geek out on this like. We, like yeah. my goal with this is like I think Sports Center, I think some people say TMZ. I, I think all of that combined, I think all of that helps make our industry better. I give nicknames to these drivers because it brings some sort of personality. Some of them, like Co Ogden, I love it. He goes into his personality, he acts like it, he embraces it, he does it. Runner Falk, same thing, Viking, quiet, gets mad. <clears throat> um, we have these pro guys, we don't use them in a pro in a professional way, because we don't even know what we're doing at a, at a certain level on a professional way, like silver state. We can do a lot of things. A lot of these things, everybody has to work together that the manufacturers, yeah. the pro drivers, race promoters. If we can all do that, like just come together and work together on growing the industry, I think it'd be better. We need to get behind people like you. We need to get, you know, we should, like you said, we should be trying to get this guy ta- like Kevin Talbot, to a race, mm-hmm. like, because he can shift, like you said, he, he has 3 million subs. He can shift the way RC goes, you know. I don't like, think people understand that power. I think he's above this already, but even if we were like, you know, we'll give you everything to just rate, like, we'll give you a, a blank check to just, and that's good content. He builds he builds a new race car and goes race. I mean, he would bring people in, but it's it's hard. I mean, I, I get it. I mean, I understand. I think easy, too. Racing's hard. Um. Mm-hmm. 
a lot of people, how many people have you seen that can, I can drive an RC car. I can go up and down the street. I can go in a field. Or you put them between two lines and you put oh, jumps no. on there. It's very difficult <laughs> for people to do that. So I think a lot of people expect this to be easy. And, and then like people just get caught up in a whole bunch of, and I think people get sponsored too fast. That's a lot of things. Like I can look at a lot of things where I've done, but like I've sponsored a lot of people really fast. And now I look back on it and I see, okay, that wasn't the right thing to do. So I think our industry as a whole needs to change and we need to kind of focus. We we have this immediate amount of people that have some sort of RC experience, have some sort of interest in RC, but yet we do nothing. Like we ain't doing anything to even go attract none of these guys. Like, yeah, it's these guys crazy, should, you know, like nothing's being done. Like, I mean, I like um, visions race. They took a shot. Freaking awesome. Like that's yeah. what that's the that's the the kind of things we need to think about. And I think A Main was the perfect company to take that shot. Like I commend them for that. That's freaking awesome. Um but, I do too. But we need to have our drivers out there in uniform signing autographs. If there's full st- full scale drivers that are up there driving like prof- like full scale professional stuff. Because that's right. what it had. So we need to treat it big. And then everybody else will take a big right now. Everybody treats it like you go to an RC race. We don't know who the top drivers are because everybody looks the same. Right. So it's, I think, I'm actually, what's crazy, dude, it's funny that you said that because at Silver State, I have guys that live in Vegas that came and visited me, right? Right. Um, hey, met me and I'm like, oh, dude, there's Mayfield over there. You know, there's, there's Lutz. And they're literally like, who are they? Like, those, right. are the, those are the big racers. They're like, we, right. We, we don't know the difference. Channel. So <laughs> imagine. It's crazy, dude. Yeah, so we're not even utilizing these guys in a professional. We look at um look at battle bots, look at drone racing, look at all this stuff. It's all about the show first. And un- look, I'll tell you one thing, like for RCGP, it's a mentality thing. So RCGP has a media day, Thursday. So the point of the media day is for companies to come and drivers to get the pictures taken, videos taken cuz all this stuff gets put into B-roll, all that stuff. The first year nobody would come. So they, you know what they had to do? They had to actually make practice, a practice day for the RCGP guys so people will come. So as an industry, we're not even thinking on a professional yeah, like, level. Like you said, we have to have the manufacturers in on that because right. if, if Techno said, you have to go to this. Yeah. Of course you have to go. <laughs> like, of course I don't, go to the, it. the point of the media day is to get your drivers, your company, all this stuff, right? But we, tell me where else in RC is there a media day? Nobody's used to that. So we're not on a, we have professional races, but we're not on a professional level. We're just still kind of, we're just, we're still flirting around with the idea of being professional. RC, I think racing side of things is way back. I think it has to do with federations. I think we need to fix a lot of these federations, uh, especially Roar in America. I know you're not a big fan of federations, but I think it yeah. starts there. And I think we need to figure out, you know, just easy. Make RC easy, make setup easy, make your transition into RC racing easier and more enjoyable because I love this stuff. I love this social aspect of it, you know, especially when I went to the worlds and you get to see people from all over the world. And then these people, for in my instance, may listen to me and I'm like, wow, like these people listen to us ramble on for four hours, like geek out over yeah. RC. And I'm so appreciative of that. And then you see that these people are just as passionate but we're just so used to doing everything a certain way. And yeah, collectively, we need to get behind something. I think as a manufacturer, like I don't care if it's a division trace, I don't care what it is, as long as we get behind something that's going to promote what we're doing. But what you're doing, what these guys, we need to work more with you, you guys, because you, you, Talbot, all these other big YouTube guys that, have these numbers, you're like the gatekeepers to a whole plethora of potential racers. Right. But we just ignore that. I guess we don't know because I didn't realize it's you told me. So that's why I preach it now. I said but a lot of them to... don't don't know. A yeah, we, don't I didn't know. even think of it to you told me. I was like, well, wow, like it blew my mind. I was like, wow, wow, that makes so much sense. And even like I'll tell JQ that, and it's like, no, oh, that makes sense. I say, like, yeah, we got all these people that have some sort of if you're watching your channel. You have some interest in RC, right? Yeah. Some whatsoever. So I don't know, man. It's it's a it's a tough question. I don't think RC is ever going to be huge. Racing wise, huge. 
Um, but I think it can be bigger and better than what it is now. But it takes people beating that drum to like get these people to move, like you know what I mean, and do stuff. Yeah. And I think I think we do that. I think we do that, and I think that's also one of the reasons maybe why we only get to a certain level and don't go no further. Cause we kind of, we also put like, Hey, let's better RC racing in front of, Hey, let's just like say yes. And, and we make every, and, and Kumbaya, everybody's happy. We have right. to push issues. Like, you know what I mean? And things can be better and you have to show people that things can be better. That's what I think. Yeah. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a money thing too, right? That's mm-hmm. kind of the big barrier is is the the cost. Mm-hmm. Um, how do we make this I, cheaper? How how do we make it cheaper, right? I, I think that uh, you know, you know, there's companies out there that have that have the money, and I don't know what money they have, but like a main, like they again, they took they took the shot to to advertise it better. Like I, I'm doing the same. Like I'm, I mean, I know it looks, it sounds weird. And I'm not gonna, I don't want to get in the details of it, but I'm taking a major hit on this spec slash thing just because I'm trying to. To, you know, grow the hobby, right? Yeah, just but like RCGP, to... not making any money, but they it's still cra- do. Yeah, it's, it's it's crazy, and I think that it's I think it's kind of a, a responsibility for the bigger companies out there mm-hmm. to to help grow these things, right? And and invest money to grow the hobby as a whole. But it's 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 tough, man, because it's like this industry. Everyone wants everyone wants everything cheap or free. No, you know they all, they people want to, want to give you a donation it. people will give you a donation but they want a discount i've always right. said that i'm very happy for the people that are on my patreon and do do give give me money but it's 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 a byproduct of the the industry's uh business plan which was you know hey let's let's and and again look it's not from sponsorship and all that stuff and we all have to do it but if we got more people in it'd be less of that. Like, you know what I mean? And I think that yeah. scares a lot of people too. I think, um, I think once we kind of have to get an old guard of RC out and then we get these new younger kids that are coming in or younger generation that are coming in, the more, the more TikTok, the more Instagram, the more having fun. Man, I, more- dude, I, I totally agree. And that was actually where my next question was going to go. It's like, we're evolving as an industry, as a community, we're evolving. And before, and I we hear the old school guys talk about it all the time. Oh, I'm I miss the days when you had to to win a national championship to get a sponsorship deal. And then you know those are the guys that are no, oh, you know, we're getting f- back to that. F- yeah, f- fifty deals are getting given away everywhere. Um, that kind of thing. But I think there's we're, we're evolving. I think we need to embrace the evolution of where our community is going. So as as a, as you you obviously have done some work with building the team. I don't know if you're in charge of or helping. No, I'm not doing Aqua anything team. with Mayako. I'm talking more of my JQ race and stuff. Okay, JQ race. So, so there. So so for me, like, so I, I have a race team also, and um, there's we're actually working on getting team sponsorships, things like that. But as I start to grow these people, like I'm not looking for the fastest guy. You know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for the guy that's going to be in it for the long run. Exactly. So like, yeah. I, I don't want to pick up the guy who's going to race for two years, then quit. I want to pick up the guy who's going to race for 15 years. Because if you think about it, those are the guys that are, to me, the most valuable, the most valuable dudes in the industry. Mm-hmm. Look at Charlie Mack. Charlie Mack's been racing forever. Like there's these guys that just have been diehard RC community driving RC. Like those are the people that I feel like need the most support. Right. And if you're, if, if the argument is, well, you want them to represent your company well and win. Those guys are going to be representing your company the best because they're making the most friends out there because they've been in it. So long. Yeah, I mean, you can be a great ambassador. It, like, no, I don't believe sponsorship dic- dictates your skill level at all mm-hmm. anymore. But let's leave the winning races and selling kits to the pro guys because that's their job. That's what they exactly. really have to do. And I another thing I wanted to say because we have. So kids, let's let's touch on that. There there needs to be a definitive line between a pro and amateur in RC. If we have that, and then we can see an actual pathway to becoming a pro at some point for these young kids, there's more we'll get more kids. Like what gotta compete with? We've got to compete with cell phones, the internet, Instagram, TikTok. Yep. And 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 then PlayStation, computer games, and all this stuff. So we've got all this to compete with. And right now, everything's quick in 60 seconds or 20 seconds and all this type of stuff. And people want instant gratification, but p- people want to have fun. And I think we need to 
we need to go after the families, the fathers and sons. But then if we, there's going to be kids out there that maybe don't have a father, maybe their mom's there and maybe my mom can't do it. Someone has to kind of mentor these kids and stuff like that. So it's, it's a whole, it's a community, a community that has to be built and has to be more uh, welcoming to everybody. Cause at the end of the day, RC is for everybody. It is not, it it is not gender specific. It is not, you know, anybody can do this. It doesn't require any special strengths or anything. So a female racer can be just as fast as a male racer, which is going to happen her soon, you know? Oh yeah, so for sure. We have so much potential people. We could, but you know, people in wheelchairs can do this. People with one arm can do this. Mm-hmm. So this is one of the best hobby slash sports. Cause it is a sport at some point. And we just, we just need to, we need to, we need to utilize what we have. And change them. I mean, somebody with vision, like same same thing you had with your your teams for your for your S one class. Sorry, is it the S one class? Sorry, the S one. Yeah. F- based off Formula One, and have guys wearing the same uniforms and stuff like that. Why can't we even get that done on a professional level know. in RC? Because we never I, had to. We never had to, and it's. Uh, I think it's that old school mentality. Is like mm-hmm. so long they win. It doesn't matter. It, and I don't want to, I want to be perfectly clear. I have the utmost respect. And I think the, those top guys are freaking insane. Like, yeah, I'm still like May, Mayfield's super cool. I mean, you, you've talked to Mayfield, um, yep. super yep. down to earth, but even still when I like, when I'm next to him, it's like, I'm, I am still kind of, I kind of feel that starstruck, like this freaking Mayfield. Right. And I, I do think it is very important for companies to have super fast drivers. But like you said, you should have your, yeah, I, I feel like those, I think they're equal in value almost, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, um, you see, now Mayfield is more social. So he's like now, like he's doing those video race recaps, which are great. So these guys are seeing, hey, I need to dabble in social media. It's important. Oh, and, dude. he's Remember when he did this high speed car? Hey, whenever I see like the Mayfield, like even Tebow, and mm-hmm. I like me and Tebow talk pretty often. I, I try to, you know, help him out with his YouTube questions because. He he understands that you know I have a YouTube channel. He's trying to start his. Like man, those guys, those guys are uh, you know if they started doing kind of really trying to tap into that basher market, also maybe we should get them they, at more events like this. They could tap into it quicker than like well, quicker than I could have, right? So you know yeah. it's, it's cool. It's cool to see it, but yeah, those guys are um, they're they're still super. Like I, I like I said, I still get starstruck when I see those dudes. Like my god, those those guys are insane. Yeah, I do too. A few of them. I, I, I'm getting kind of used to it now, a little of them. But I, when I see them busy, I just don't bother them. Like if they're busy thrashing, I'm like, all right, I'll come back and talk to you in a bit. Yeah. But yeah, lots of things like that, man. But we need to we we need to look at we we don't. It's not one way to do things here. We need to be doing everything. Right. That's yep. how I look at it. Like if we need to be thinking. Idea, we need to be thinking outside of the box. Yeah. We can't we can't keep thinking the same way. Let's just throw bigger races. You know. Um, it's not growing. We need to grow the community, right? Yeah, we, we, that's what we need to do. Grow the community. And that's why I see things like what you're doing. I like that. You know, when you tell me you get 50%, you ran out of transponders. That's a, that's a good thing to have. Yeah. You know, that's huge. So we, we were literally, we were talking about, I was talking to Indy whenever we were about to, that first, before our first race, I said, make sure you stock up a lot of slashes because people are going to come in here and want to buy slashes to race. And they were like, well, we could, but we would run out of transponders because transponders are back. <laughs> I was like, that sucks, but that's a great problem for the community. Right? Yeah. I mean, and I think all the, it, it has to, it, everybody has to do their part. Like, and every, and there's no wrong way. Like, I like what you're doing. I like what RCGP is doing. I like what Vision's doing. I like what Race Like a Girl's doing. I like the individual person that's there trying to promote people, helping people, all that races. Just don't look. I think. I also think maybe now things are a little bit too serious for people that are never going to be a pro driver. I, I kind of say this a lot. If you're 31 years old, you got three kids, you're not going to be a pro RC driver. I'm sorry. You couldn't afford I to be a pro RC driver. But so I, I like take it from someone who took it. I took it kind of personal when people are like, dude, Mark's not even fast. Like he's just, he, he's not fast. And that's why I was like, dang it, I'm going to actually work on getting faster because it really bothered me that people thought that. It's hard as someone that's extremely competitive to just put, just let it go that we're not going to be a pro driver. I mean, you can be serious about your racing, but 
Right. You have to have like, look, man, I'm going to, I've been around enough of these pro guys and enough of these young guys to see that some people just have it. Like, you so know you what have, I mean? Right. No, I get and, it. <laughs> totally. And when you have it and then you combine everything else, like, and then you have people like, you're like, Hey, you know, like I have a guy who will say, here's my truggy results. I'm in the A main. Here's my E buggy results. I'm in the A main. Okay. Where's your nitro buggy results? I'm in the C main. Well, you got to drive your nitro buggy more because yeah. that's, what's going to make you a better driver. And I think with the sponsorship and all that type of stuff happening so fast, that puts a lot of expectations on people. I see that a lot too. And I don't know, man. It's, 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 it's a t- like I said, dude, it's, it's I like tough that t- stuff. It's a tough pill to swallow, dude. Whenever uh, like I haven't, I haven't podiumed a big national race for a long time. And yeah, I used to still think, enjoy it. I used to be in denial. I'm like, am I getting that slow? Like, I'm not getting that slow. And like, I, that's when I went through that hole. I got to make myself faster. But then I thought about this, and I, I I'm standing behind this. People are getting faster. Just the racing community in general, th- th- it's faster than it was before. Of and I think pr- proof to that is, I don't think Adam Drake has gotten any slower. He's just I think people Adam, getting faster. Exactly. Exactly. I think everyone. <laughs> I These think everyone's just getting with so cars. much faster. Look, I remember back in the day, you would go over jumping. If you could wiggle your wheels, just like the best. Like, oh, I wiggled yeah. my wheels. And then you, oh, I did a little whip. Man, these kids out there, they're doing stuff with cars that make me do just be like, what? what? Like, I don't yeah. even know how that's possible. It's, a, it's and that's insane. Just, that's just starting. Like, the, like, every little driver is, every young driver is coming in and, and evolutions happen. Like, they're doing, they learn how to do things faster. They're pushing harder. When, I, when I found out when I found out that that was another level, like that's a level that's going to be hard to train to get to, was whenever I first saw Ty Tessman drive at the dirt. He he hit this jump and it kicked his car in a weird angle, and instead of correcting, he did a full barrel roll and landed it. Because and I talked about it, he's like that was the fastest way I get back on my wheels. It wasn't I did it on accident or I didn't mean to. <laughs> like his brain processed that fast. To know that his car would not be able to go back right. that way and need a full barrel landing and kept going. Yeah, like, and I would have done a thousand hell? flips after oh that. So, so, so bad. I think people need to see that because it's not enough to have somebody just come to your local track and maybe race with you because they're not really good. But when you see, like, I'll tell you what, when I went to the Worlds, and I've seen this before with when, like, at RCGP, when you see, like, the Europeans and the Americans get together, it, it steps up to a whole different level. Like, even... These guys like the out there, they don't want to lose like like you got all these fast guys and you had all the fast guys from America right. and it's like, yeah. What? So you probably you probably already beat this horse down. But the Jeff Keaton comment where he said that America was gonna crush out there. I like I, I think American drivers are fast, but I even I knew I was like, Man, it's gonna be tough. There's gonna be tough for them to to compete out at the worlds on their turf like that. The track style is completely different. Yeah, lots of corner speed, big track, lots of elevation. <laughs> Like I don't like it, it's almost like on it's almost like on road corner speed on dirt. It's insane. Well, a lot of Europe. That's look. I always so the Europeans come to DNC. They do pretty well. You know, Ronald Fox won it a couple of times. Batty has finished second. Ongaro doesn't seem to do too well. He, he doesn't. I think fourth is best finish. Mm-hmm. But man, when you get out on those type of tracks, and you can you can't see it from the video, but that track has so much elevation, and it's so fast, and you just it's hard. A lot of off camera stuff. And these European guys, they race like they, they also race like the worlds all the time. So they do semis. They do, yeah, you know, run yeah. yeah, I think he did a sixty. He did two sixty minute finals at RCGP, forty five. You know, so these guys. And I would say that maybe racing in Europe is a little bit more organized, more full scale feeling type of thing. I would say like at the worlds we had like beer gardens and. You know, people were just having a good time as well. It was yeah. serious, but they were having a good time. But yeah, it's going to be hard. Fend and Mayfield were my two picks to do really well there. But if so, there's so many young, fast racers out there in Europe that we don't know about. Well, I, I do because I I study yeah. that side of things, but a lot of people don't know about it. And there's, you know, the European guys are fast, man. They're, they're fast too. Like they're so, racing. So- when I first went to the dirt and I saw David Ronfalk for the first time, I, it was hard to explain. You can't, you can't explain it without actually being there to see it. You can't see it on video, but it was Ronald Falk was noticeably faster 
than everyone at the dirt when he right before he won. I think got second that year, but he won the year right after that or something like that. But were there any? Was there anyone out there? Could you tell that like Algaro, uh, like he's just the, was the fastest right off the bat. <laughs> you, you you could tell just by watching that he was the fastest guy. Like even in practice, you could tell he Robert was Paul just was like, fast. Hey, no. I thought that maybe um, Fen Fen was fast too. Don't get me wrong. Um, I thought Kanas might have got up to a challenge him a little bit more. And like, oh man, like when that kid Barkan did TQ Durant, oh he he was so fast. Didn't his, like that's they, what, well, there were two of them in there, right? Right. So uh, Bar- Barak's the older one, and Barkan's uh, the young one. Barkan's the one that TQ'd. And you watch these kids like they're like every jump flip, jit, flip. I'm just like. <laughs> Like every jump they take, they're doing something to the car in the air, and it no matter how small the jump is, but such so talented. But yeah, I kind of saw Angaro. I I honestly thought that the sixty minute final was going to be Angaro just walking away with it. Oh, so yeah, well, he was noticeably faster as he walked. Yeah, I just said yeah. no, I, and in my mind, I'm saying it, the and I and I honestly said the only person I can see if David could get a, a start or come from the pack, he can catch because he's Kanas beat has beat uh Kanas beat. Uh, Ungaro straight up at RCGP Italy. They had a great battle for our, and then Ronafel beat them both at the world at the Euros. So, you know, these are the two guys to really beat Ungaro this year. He's beat them obviously too. So I knew it was mm. going to be battle. I thought Kanas was going to be a little bit more of a challenge against him, and he wasn't. But man, I, I Ungaro was just like his driving style is like he. Is he I think it's radio? cultural. Yes, I think it's cultural. I think it's like Italian Viva Libre. Like he just jumps and his cars in a drift, and it's just like and it just goes. And he never looks. You talk to him. I've only seen him frustrated once. That was the RCGP Italy is mad at Canas because he felt like he was hitting him all the time. But you see him is very not frustrated. He's smiling. He's having a good time. And he's just he's just that good, man. He needs to win in America, though. That's what I think has to happen. He needs to come to DNC. He needs to do well there. He needs to win. He has plenty of time for that. Uh, but yeah. And then we're gonna see guys that are gonna be faster than him coming up. That's the thing about it. Because there's people out there emulating him. So yeah, emulating yeah, him, he's fast. You're gonna learn where he's not fast. It's it's I, I think it's crazy. Right it's now, crazy I think the level man. of of eight scale racing right now in in the world period is at a the level a highest level it's ever been at. Yeah, dude, it's insane. And it's just so everyone knows that's at all levels, not just the pro level. <laughs> even, yeah, just period. Like, even the open guys are faster too. Like everyone, dude, like, watch, so you know, like these guys because everybody wants to get fast and just everybody's just going faster, doing things. These cars are performing better, materials are better, everything's so much better. So, the other thing that I, the other thing I noticed, what I thought was funny was not funny, but was interesting is you know S Works doesn't have the biggest presence here. But it was almost like S Works was like the techno huge um, in Europe. Huge. <laughs> it's like the techno overseas. Like techno's huge here, right? Yeah. Um, but S Works was huge over there. I was like, yeah, the guy God, Max S-Works everywhere. Lots of money. Max is uh-huh. like a millionaire. Loves racing. Pumping a lot of money into S Works. Oh, dude, pumping a lot of money into it. Oh, he isn't bringing his drivers to RCGP though. He isn't bringing Canasa boots though, unfortunately. But uh, he's a ra- he's into racing and. He he's yeah, he's just put a lot of money into S Works and they've grown, they are big in Europe. That's crazy, dude. They'll be how, they'll how grow we, in they'll grow in America too, I think. Yeah. Um there's they've definitely grown a lot since Tim's took taken over. And they haven't really had this type of presence as I would think A Main had them when Hara drove yeah. for him. But uh, yeah, I'll tell you who looked really like one of the fastest guys was Barufalo. Like God, I was hoping he was going to be the fastest guy. Out. I was hoping he's going to walk away with it. In practice, he was just doing that. Like he was like, "Wow, look at that!" Like I just listened to his car and it's like, like where it's everybody. Hard, it's hard for me to just fathom that he's that much faster than Tebow. Like Tebow is the Tebow's blistering fast. Yeah, but, but T- Tebow is more consistent, and Tebow's oh, really? fast too. But Rufalo is just wild. Like if but Rufalo has to back it down a bit. Really? He has to back it down <laughs> and become more consistent, I think. Like when I say back it down, like back it down five percent. And he's he saved that five percent. But he's a pleasure to watch, man. He does some crazy stuff. 
But wait till you see these like killer kids. I was hoping he'd be at least top three. Jeez, wait till you see these right? killer kids, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, two of them up there. Like the way they flick the wheels and all this stuff. I'm just like, what? <laughs> And that's nice, <laughs> nice young kid, nice young man too. They don't look the age like Barkan's sixteen and Borok's eighteen. I hope they get to America too. So this is like one of my goals was like I wanted people to see this stuff because a lot of the Europeans don't get a lot of a lot of love. They do now, but it's a lot of fast guys over there, man. But you, you know, you being over there in the announcers booth, it gave it made us as American, at least for me, I felt more connected to that race. You know, what I'm saying it's like. You were over there in the booth. It was it was almost like Scotty was announcing it at the I, same time, right? Yeah, I, I I have to give a lot of thanks to Nick and uh, those guys from RC Racing TV. When I started doing things in the booth was 2019, and I never really had done it. I'm not a play-by-play guy at all. I'm not really good at that. It's, it goes too fast for me, but I can tell this story, and that's what I like to And um, I appreciate that. I had a few people. I know Nick's a little bit hard to understand because he talks really fast. But I love him. I love the way he announces races. It reminds me of Formula One. Yeah. And um, he does a good job when he's calling races. And I just try to fill in where I can. And he's, he's the one running the show. So I, I, I didn't think I was going to be up there that much. But I kind of got up there. And then it was like, it was, just, it was long days. And it yeah, was they like, let you in there in the, the main. I mean, crap. I wouldn't even. I was so nervous in that mean. I was. Oh, man. I could, I was up there like when I when Ronald Fuck would make a mistake, I was up like. He couldn't hear it. I was just making off. And I, was, <laughs> I was so nervous, man. I was so nervous. I had never been that nervous in a race. Um, was so a you, think, race, uh, you think you think Angaro's here to stay then? I think um, he's all, he's young, right? He's twenty one. Oh yeah, he's got he's got a few more. He's got solid. a lot of, he's got a he's lot got, of he's got RC a few more solid him. years. He's and the crazy part is he he did that what on a six minute pit schedule? Yeah, he just <laughs> he, I don't know, man. <laughs> like when you see him doing stuff like that, and then you watch how hard like that on um, that Ronald drove to catch him, like was amazing, and then he just like picks it up a little bit here and does this, and then yeah, he's he just needs to I think figure out something for America, for American style tracks. And I think it's not just that. I think it's the whole process, racing at night, long days, all that type of stuff. Don't do that over in Europe. Not used to it. They don't do that. They don't do PMB style in Europe. No, we won't be there to no one. <laughs> you're not racing at four in the morning. No, no, none of that. Um, so I hope they come to America more because I want to see, I don't care where it is. I just want to see these guys race more because I think we'll be as race fans, we'll be entertained. And then people, I say all the time, you see real speed, real speed. That's real speed. Yeah, that guy's amazing, man. That guy's amazing. Yeah, that, that must amazing. have been an awesome experience. I would have loved to go out there. Yeah, it's something. Yeah. I think if you're a hardcore racer, a world is something you should go to. Um, we're not sure. They say possibly Brazil for 24 or maybe America. So we'll see. Uh, what happens? But it was definitely expensive. It's a long race, though. It's definitely long. Yeah. How many? Don't go like, for the whole week. How many entries were at? I didn't check how many entries. How many entries are at? Like, Hundred and eighty something. Eighty eight something like that. So it's not that. It's not like that Silver State feel at all. No, no, but no. But then there. Here's the thing. <laughs> it's a lot of people there because then people come. Families, pit man. Like everybody's yeah. got a pit guy. Uh, lots of families there. So at like opening ceremonies. It's it's if it was like five hundred people there, oh, nice. so you know, and it was just packed, and then they everybody just milling about, and then like the beer garden was flowing, like, and then they had another beer garden under, and it was just people spending yeah. money, and then like on Sunday, uh, Saturday, sorry, people came to watch, and like everything was full around, and everybody was watching. It was just crazy. That is crazy. It's crazy. Man. It's crazy. So, what are you, are you gonna are you going to Silver State this year or next year? I don't know. We'll see. Um. I don't know what my travel schedule is going to be like next year. I'd kind of want to, I might, might not travel as much as I didn't this year because yeah, we have to get funding for that, you know? So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but silver state will be the easiest race because I don't need a rental car, nothing fly in, fly out. I enjoy the race. Uh, I enjoy the, I always enjoy the racing there too. It always seems to be exciting. I don't enjoy the dust, but that it was a lot better this year. Well, you're not in there the very much. Yeah. Like <laughs> Huh? I said, if, when you're not in there as much like I am, like oh, as soon I, as my I, race is over, I'm out of there. Yeah, well, see, I'm not a big Vegas guy, so you didn't see me. I'm not a gambler. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not into shows and all that stuff. So, 
I'm there for the RC. I really enjoyed the fifth scale stuff. I really did. I did. So all right, I got one more question. Sweet. This turned into like we supposed to just do 45 minutes. Now it's I know, 45 not, minutes. Dude. Hey man, we're, we're, no flowing, worries. we're flowing. Um top three. What would what would you consider your top three interviews that you've ever done? Oh um Ryan Mayfield like your, your, one. Your, your your favorite ones. My right? favorite ones? I'll tell you my favorite ones. Uh I like the Ryan Mayfield one. And I think Dave was on that one too, because we was talking about P and B. That's my most popular one. But I really enjoyed it because I think at the beginning, Mayfield wanted to do it early. So he did it early. And he's kind of cold at the beginning. But then he saw like, all right, he's kind of opened up, you know? And he opened up and then he started talking about stuff and his emotions and why he did this and all that stuff. And I think that's what I like about that. Uh, Jason Snyder, too, from Raw Speed was one really? of my favorites. Yes. Because I thought it was going to be super nerdy and I thought it was going to be like this PC podcast with him. And it was uh-huh. complete opposite. He was very vocal about his thoughts on RC. He was very funny. He was very witty. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. And then I, owe, I, think, I owe him a phone call. I'm actually supposed to call. Yeah. Um, he, apparently, he's got some new stuff coming out. I was supposed to be checking out. Yeah, so I really, I, I need to get him back on because I really enjoyed talking to him. I was completely shocked at what he, because I'd never really talked to him before. And then I was expecting, you know, like, I don't know why I had yeah. this nerdy type of guy in my, but he was very candid, very, very, a lot of stuff he said I agree with. And I think my third favorite is actually, I really like the old school stuff. So I like like my Greg Dagani interview because he has so many stories. And I pit, I pitted with Greg Dagani at B and B. Oh my gosh, he has so many stories. Mm. And then he ha- he will just he'll start he'll we so I stayed with him at the worlds. He'll just start talking to you about some race and thinks you're there. You was there. Do you remember back in this day when we did this? And, da, 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 da. and I'm like, no, Greg. I, I read about it in the magazine. I read about it. And I remember you being, and I remember the race you're talking about, but I was not there. I read about it in a magazine. So he has some great stories. I would like to get like him, Barry Baker, Richard Saxton, Pavitas, um, and a couple of the other old school guys like Chad Bradley and get all those. That's, that's the attitude era of RC and just have them like sit down for all, it'd probably be more than an hour, but it would be so many stories. Uh, and it would just be great. I think it would be great. I think for me, okay. So my one of my biggest things as a podcaster and in this industry is, I I still get kind of. I said to Greg, I said, man, I used to read about you in a magazine, and we're like having fun at this hotel. Or then Mark Pavitas would be like, oh man, I listen to every podcast you make. What? Like really? Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> like you listen to us ramble on for five hours? Like I love them. Keep them up. And then I get, and then Barry Baker, while he's listening to a podcast, and Max is probably talking about Fen, his message in me, like effing off Max, his son. So <laughs> I think uh, I enjoy things, little things like that. Uh, bring I appreciate that, and of course, just, uh, the amount of people that I meet too. I'm sure you get this too. So you meet, you know, you meet so many people. Mm-hmm. I tell people all the time, I'm not rich, but I'm rich in relationships. So um, and you, you just never know who being nice to or, or listening to somebody that's having a conversation with in life will, will, will help that person or how they yeah. remember it. So I, I thoroughly enjoy meeting new people. I'm a, I think at the world's one of the things I do regret was once I got in the booth, I didn't get out and about as much. So I didn't get to meet and talk to as many people. Man, you know me, I'll, I'll talk to you for 10, 15 minutes right. or longer. So yeah, I, I think that's one of the big things in RC that I like. I, the people that say, hey, we t- we listen to you. We live in this country. I'm like, wow, really? And I think that's awesome. Yeah, that's and you you have the same thing because you have the same effect. You you go, people watch your channel. And well, all ambassadors, you 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 are your ambassador doing your thing, which I think is great. You're a gatekeeper for for that. You, you know, you're the, you're the person to get these people involved in RC. And when they racing and when they get when they get deep, 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 they can geek out with us. And when we're heard rambling on about setup for, th- well, actually, I I blank out when Max and the guys going about setup because I just can't handle it no more. <laughs> I I honestly just blank out. I've heard it so much, I just know what they're gonna. Unless it really piques my interest, but a lot of people love that. 
because they want set up help and they have questions and that's part of the podcast and that's what we do. So I don't mind the questions and I learn from them as well. So yeah, man, we're just trying to do cool things and do our part in making RC cool and challenging people to do things differently. So J- Jason Snyder, I would never thought you would have said that one. That one threw mm-hmm. me off. He seemed like super cool guy though. Um, and then Greg Degani. So I, when he pitted with me at PNB, I entered, I said, Hey, what's up, man? I said, Mark Santa Maria. He goes, who? He had no clue who I was. <laughs> and he, and he goes, he goes, who do you, he, he was at, kind of like trying to get an idea. I said, yeah, MSM, it's the, the, the tent you're under. Cause he pitted under my tent. Right. He goes, Oh, you're MSM. I said, yeah. And he's like, well, what do you do? I'm like, oh, never mind, dude. What's up, man? And I started hanging out with him, but he had no clue. Like, I don't even think he has Facebook, so he's not. He does. Confused. He does have a Facebook. He <laughs> likes to argue with people on. Oh, and, does he? And he he likes to say something smart. He just doesn't do YouTube and all that stuff. He yeah. listens to this podcast, as, and I like having him on. And but it's just like if it wasn't for like guys like Greg and Pavidis and all the guys, our Nitro Racing wouldn't be what it is today. No. Yeah, so, those guys, dude, I, I made fun of him because he runs that two hundred dollar SH engine. Yeah, you got. <laughs> well, he's charging his charging his lipo receive a battery pack up while charging his hybrid car while we're sitting off in the hotel because <laughs> he got it plugged in his in the cigarette lighter. It's like I need it with some old janky with this charger. I've never had a lipo blow up. I said, "Wow, you're charging the hybrid car while you're charging this car." And then oh, he just don't care. He don't care. <laughs> it's it's, it's a good there. time. Old school RC was rough, like old school motocross. They they hazed each other. They were rough. They raced hard. Yep. Like Kyosho, if you didn't do, if you didn't make the A man back in the day, and you was a Kyosho driver, you was on the B team, right away. That's so crazy, it was, dude. It was really hard back then. Yeah, it was. So, but awesome, cool. man. This that, went that, that, way. I didn't realize we was gonna go this long, but I thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, yeah, absolutely. It was a good chat. Uh, thank you for your time. Keep up your good work as well, you and your thank wife. You. And yeah, your thank, family. thanks for having me on the show. Like, sorry I took up so much of your time. Typically, no. I'm like, man, this, this should be an hour, and we end it. But well, that's why we're having fun a good being chat. on the other. It's fun being on the other side, right? I know. I enjoy it too. I do the same thing. I go to other people's podcasts and start asking them questions. So I don't yeah. mind. But so. thank you for your time. I hope to see you probably next year. Yeah, um, absolutely. And just keep up the work, man. We need good work and. Uh, I wish you to get your 100K and more subs because I know how important that is to uh, we need to spread the word, man. Spread yeah. the RC word. And I got I got to give a shout out to all the MSM Nation. I know a lot of them watch your your podcast. Big oh, shout thank out you to, to you them guys. as well. I, like, obviously, I mean, obviously, and I know this sounds so cliche, but it is 100 percent true. Like none of this would even be possible for one for all the people who supported me uh, going up. So I, I appreciate all the MSM Nation, everyone who supports all the social media, even even the guys who support the No Name Podcast, like none of this would even be possible if you guys didn't watch or listen to anything. Exactly. So, so thanks to everyone. Yeah, I need to get me. I'm gonna get me a MSN chat. Where can we get MSN chat from? MSNvlog.com. MSN. So, yeah. See, that's so easy. So get myself a chat. <laughs> get myself and a chat. Any any of my YouTube videos will have links in the description for um, all the all the merch and stuff like that. So. So yeah, so big shout out to all you guys that that support and follow both the No Name Podcast, MSM, and On the Tone. So thank you so much. Yeah, we cannot do it without without the support of the people. It's simple as that. And don't simple don't wait that. don't wait too long to have me back on the show again, man. I like this. Yeah, I like I, to break the monotony. Well, yeah, that's cool. I enjoy it too, and I really like. I really like just back slash thing, and then we got talking, Thanks, and I was like, we got to have you want to talk about that. I like awesome. I like what you're doing. I don't. I'm not saying I watch all your videos, but I definitely watch all the swap meet videos. That's a lot of videos. So I don't believe. <laughs> I don't a lot believe. Of, yeah, I just they go. Oh, I found your podcast six months ago, and I binged all 209 episodes. I'm like, <laughs> really? You consume six thousand hours of content in that amount of time? Wow. Um. Yeah, I understand that, man. Keep up your good work and keep your good attitude and enjoy an RC, man. Absolutely, man. Sweet. Thanks a lot, Thank dude. You for, Thank you for your time. All right, so thank you for MSN for that was a great chat with you, man. I really appreciate it. We kind of went longer than we thought, but you know, when the chats, when the conversation's going good, you got to keep it going. So now we get back to that rant that JQ started that wasn't going to be a rant because then he went on for like 15 minutes because he had to go and he had time. So 
That is brought to you by Lugs Racing Tires. Lugs Racing has over 55 years of combined RC experience. They've been testing treads, wheels, and rubber for performance. They have the Econ line of tires, which were developed with racing budgets in mind. High quality but lower cost means savings can be passed on to you, the RC driver. They have their Lugs Premium brand, the race tires. They are made for pure performance. They, in fact, they just released some the ones called Slides a couple of weeks ago. They're made using the Lugs Custom Molds and Proprietary Rubber Compound. Tires are available in Medium Soft, Super Soft, Mega Soft, and Long Wear. You can go to www.lugsracing.com. You can save 25% with the promo code NNRC Lugs in all caps. All right. So, like I said, JQ said he wasn't going to rant, and then he got into a rant. So we're just going to go right and pick that round up where he kind of left off, you know, excuse my editing skills and all that stuff. But yeah, it kind of did get into a rant and what we wanted to say. So with that said, let's just go back to see what JQ had to say. Sweet. And last question comes from Chris Vegas. Why no Mugen and RCGP? You know what I'm going to say to him? Ask Mugen. Well, I mean, this is yet another rant. Can we do a really short rant? Can we I have put to this? Go? No, let's put it in with the rant that we're going to do. Because it's For RCGP. Yeah, we're going to do a rant here in a minute. Oh, record it some other time? Or? No, we're going to record it in really quick time because you owe me 30 minutes. No, I don't. I have to go. I'm not recording anything, but I'm going to do a short rant right now. Oh. Why is, why is Mugen not in RCGP was the question. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mugen isn't in RCGP because of this mentality that we have in RC, which I already explained, which is only think about me. I only do things that benefit me. I'm a selfish, I'm selfish and greedy. People don't want to admit that, but that's really what it is. Truly. Because if there are two options, one option where you would benefit more, but other people also benefit. Another option where you benefit less, but no one else benefits. Companies in RC go for that second option. They benefit less, but no one else benefits. That's the type of decisions they make. And it's so fucking frustrating. It's, it's like people say that, oh, this is great. And not necessarily just about RCGP, anything. They're like, oh, this is good. Oh, we support this. This is amazing. This is just what we need. Okay. Then when they actually would have to do something to support that, they don't. Why? Because it, that great thing, which they acknowledge is good, also benefits others. So they feel like they are helping their competition. That's ridiculous. And actually, specifically in the Mugen case, one reason was, well, if we go back to RCGP and Mugen, one reason was that RCGP's goal is to grow RC. If you succeed in gro- growing RC, See, that means that new people come into RC and start racing. Mugen don't have any products for new people in RC. Therefore, it doesn't make sense for Mugen to support RCGP and grow RC. Oh, my God. This is the level of thinking, I'm telling you. So what do you think those new people eventually will do who get into RC? Let's say a million people started racing RC now next week. Not one single of those million people would buy a Mugen because Mugen don't offer any cars for beginners. But those beginners don't stay beginners forever, do they? They get into RC, some people quit, others continue, others continue racing. Eventually, they'll buy a high-end race car, correct? So this like short-sighted, narrow-minded, selfish thinking is the reason Mugen and many other brands aren't in RCGP or other brands haven't joined whatever other projects have been ongoing. And it's the reason why Americans aren't at Buggyland. It's the reason why there wasn't good coverage there. It's the reason for so many efforts in the past also to unite the industry, to come up with some kind of World Series or to do anything bigger than we currently do. Uh, It's the reason for all of those efforts failing. So, yes. Yeah. So, look, being as we are on a rant, we're just going to continue to rant real quick. Give me five minutes of your time. So, we're gonna, I was going to do, I was going to talk about silly season, but we don't have time to talk about that this week. And I haven't really heard anything. Mm-hmm. So, let's talk about this. I am a little bit upset at 
on Garo, I, I just I can't fathom this. I really can't. So not that I don't I like Aiden Horn and I don't I like Cole Tallard and I like and I like Born Horse and I like Tackler and all that stuff. But I can't I cannot fathom why Associated is not sending Ongaro to this race. Like this, I cannot th- yeah. fathom why the man just won. This is your number one driver in the world. He is the number one driver in the world, just one of worlds. Why yeah. is this guy not at a race that you will then claim? This is what they'll put. They'll put on their box. They, they, you know, like he, he can still, he can win this. Like he can win the, the, the series. Like he can win it. He can win it. And I think, um, does Associated have in the champ in the team points? Aren't they up there as well? I think so. Yeah. Uh, so they is- can win this. They can win this. But they're not sending them. They're not sending their top driver. And S Works, Kanas, one of the hottest drivers in the world right now. Okay, I can understand Boots not coming. He's got a family and all that stuff. I can understand that. We don't we don't need both of them, but Kanas and, and Born Horse. Why isn't he there? Like I just can't fathom them it. Fathom why same, these same big reason, companies can't do this. Same reason I already said. So I all this almost caused me to burn everything to the ground. Seriously. <laughs> it was close. I'm happy I didn't post anything. But this is what's so annoying. Even when you have someone buy into an idea, support it, they don't do it wholeheartedly. It's like, I don't understand. If you are going to commit to something like, okay, let's do this. Let's try and show, lead by example, join uh, this series and make it good support so that we can have good media coverage, pictures, videos, everything, social media posts. We're going to promote this now. And if we do it for two years, Maybe that will inspire the rest of the brands to join. And then we can have one collective unit of the best drivers and the best brands. More sponsors come in. Maybe we can attract even bigger sponsorship deals because now we actually have something. We have mm-hmm. social media presence. We have a website. We have a good media package. We have a following. We've got an actual product now. Easy to understand. Everything's in one place. It looks great. You can't. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes some time. It takes people buying into it and then doing their best. So that's the goal. Everyone agrees it's a great goal to have, and it's doable. Yet, then the people who join do it half ass, not sending the same drivers to every race, not sending their best drivers. Then it will never become attractive yeah, I or agree. value. I agree. I agree. So. They are so you can't like if you join, join properly. If you don't, then there's nothing. Th- that sort of half assed thing is just spending David's money for what it's not going to go anywhere. Associated should have sent Ongaro and Rivkin to every single race, S Works should have sent Bornhorst and Kanas to every single race. Then the series would be a lot more interesting. I agree, there the too. Same drivers everywhere, the best drivers everywhere. So what is the point of joining and sending a B team and then one race on the road and, and then uh, uh, Tom Robin? You know like, why? Oh, you why? know why? You are like, because it's going to take a stand. It's going to be like, all right, are we going to get behind this and be behind this? Are we going to still fiddle fart and still try to be one foot in out the door, one foot in the door? We want change, but we need to stay like this. It's going to take a collective issue and it doesn't have to be rcgp it could be you said this it could be anything but it has to be a collective issue by these companies to say okay this is what we're going to do but there's nothing like there's no like come on let's be honest I, I like there, uh, it's just frustrating it's so frustrating i i was so high hopes that i, I just can't fathom like why you wouldn't send on guard this man just literally won the world championships won it hottest racer on the planet right now and i know he should be in America. It should be no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Like, could you imagine this is where it comes on to the lack? And, and when people when people get on, uh, say, what are you talking about, Lefty? This is the utter and utmost lack of professionalism that we have. Yeah. We do not have in this RC industry. Lack, lack of professionalism and also, like, uh, no one wants to, no one wants to, 
Damn, what's the word? Nobody, nobody wants, wants to, to. Everybody's trying to guard their little nest egg, and nobody wants to risk that. So it's like, hey, we have to go. We have to do every race that's available at this. And I understand. Look, I understand race dates, dates clash as well. Yeah, but no one wants but, to take on any responsibility. You know that too, or or like make a decision and stick to it. No one has. And nobody wants to call them out on courage. it. Nobody wants to say, "Hey, why aren't you doing this?" Oh, I did. Well, I, so okay, so Ongaro isn't going because he doesn't want to go. That's the bottom line. Like he doesn't really want to go because, you know, of takeouts and drama at other races and this kind of stuff. Okay, mm-hmm. fine. But that happens to everyone. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pekko lost the podium because he got a penalty coming into pit lane, which was he crashed into pit lane, but he got a penalty because it was said, don't cut the pipe, and he crashed over the pipe. He got a penalty. He lost the podium. Uh, he lost the qualifying race win when Kanas took him out, mm-hmm. two corners from the end. Uh, Sanketin, Barry, and Ronne Falk were all taken out by Tom Robin multiple times. Multiple times. Uh, this happens, okay? As a series improves, and if more really good drivers are there, the racing will also improve. If the series improves, there will be more and better refereeing and referees, right? So if all of these things that people are not happy with improve over time if enough people support it. If they don't, if they stay home, if they throw the toys out of the pram, it's never going to get there. Was it better to go to Buggyland? No one knows who was there or what happened. Maybe some people watched five minutes of the stream in Spanish. Not, no Americans were there, so America didn't care. You know, is that better? I just don't, I can't fathom why he isn't. I like, it's not, it shouldn't even be that he doesn't want to go. You go. Like, it, it's like, yeah, I, I know, I know, but that's, this, that's what I'm saying. This like, isn't, yeah, I just don't I'm get sure, that. And... I'm sure if he, this is what I also told him, like, he just won the world championship, even if associated are hesitant on sending him. If he says he wants to go, then he's going to be there. I guarantee yeah. it. I guarantee it. I, I even said, like, if you really wanted to go, and even if associated said no, someone else would pay. I guarantee But you know what? It. You know what? He's going to have to get over that because he's going to have to go to America and he's going to have to race and he's going to have to do well and win over there, in my opinion. Like and I, said this on the last po- Just, I said this on the last podcast. Stay in Europe where you're a hero. That's what Sigani <laughs> always says. It's a shame. And, and then I'm, I'm S-Works. Why not can S? Why not can S? That I don't. I mean, this last Maybe. race clashes with the Spanish nationals. So uh, that's why. But that's yet another thing uh, where these nationals if if there is a series like this, especially since now Efra is Efra has endorsed RCGP, mm-hmm. it shouldn't be possible to clash with a national. That's another thing. And not only that, if if there is a series like this, and if drivers have to do the nationals to qualify for Euros and Worlds, then Efra should make it so if you are an RCGP driver, you automatically qualify. How many so nationals not, is there? It's they, a bunch. Are, they have four. Four in nitro, four in electric. It's a shame, man. It's a shame for the U.S. people because this is going to be the biggest. Like, it, we don't get to see the Europeans come over much, right? DNC, and we yeah. never really get to see them in the southeast. Yeah. So I think I think SWORKS is doing their customer base a big disservice as well because the southeast yeah, and is associated. a big, yeah, and south and yeah, both both are big south. Like, look, you got BTRC and SWORKS in southeast. Uh, you got a big AE presence in Southeast, right? And look, I love I love Aiden and, and Cole, and I, I like Mornhorse and other stuff. But I want to see. I think what do I think that Associated and Aspects did a disservice to the to the base by not sending the two best drivers. Well, yeah, I mean, don't you think that all the guys there on the East Coast in America, who yes. many of them have never raced abroad, yes, don't you think they would like to see Ongaro at Badlands? Of course. Of course, like I would, and look, I would love to see Ongaro wheeling around Badlands. You know what yeah. I mean? I would love it, and everybody that's coming to this race would love to see it. You know, how yeah. is it that like a small company like Mayako can send three Europeans over four? Because you're going. Yeah, you know what it is. 
It's what I just Because you committed to it. Yeah, because when you commit to something and you, you say that something is a good idea, then you should act like it too. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I just, it's, it's so like annoying when people say something and then they, their actions are different. Then you call them out on it and they just come up with some lame excuses. Or no, they no, blame no. you. <laughs> so they shift the blame onto something else. Well, I'm sure we've got a lot of heat for this, but I just... Yeah, but I this just, is the truth. It's just yeah, truth. I just think it's a big disservice. And when, when I didn't, when I and I and when I saw that they weren't coming, I was just like, ah, I feel yeah. bad for the people, the races of the southeast, yeah. because they don't get a chance to see these guys come race. Yeah. But it doesn't take from it. It's it, it does take from it in that aspect. It's still going to be a good race. It's going to be free to watch, so everybody can watch it for free. That goes off next week. Um, I'll yeah, be there. Let, let me say another thing about that. You said it's free. Okay, it's free to watch the last RCGP. This year, RCGP had a pay-per-view thing. Mm-hmm. Everyone was crying about that. P- to reach a lot of people, like tens, hundreds of thousands of people on social media or YouTube, you don't have to be live. We can post a video on today, which is five years old, and it can go viral, and 100 million people can see it. Right? can be a picture of a oh a video of a squirrel uh, hiding nuts in it in its asshole I, I don't I don't care what it is but it can be an old video and people will watch it right it doesn't have to be live same goes for racing you can you can show highlights of some awesome race and it can go viral even though it's not live it could be a three right. year old race. So you understand this concept of how videos work and how people watch videos, correct? (laughs) So if we have RCGP and we're struggling because teams aren't signing up, sponsors aren't signing up, there's not enough money to do it. Teams say, we want to do it. This is a good idea, okay? Everyone says, oh, the media is really good. Let's do this. Okay. How about every single person who wants to watch pays 10 bucks or whatever? Maybe that's $50,000 if all of them paid $10. $50,000 to put on a race, okay? That can be an amazing race. So you do that for a season, and you have incredible media coverage, incredible events. Everyone's happy. And what have people paid? $10. So maybe $40 for four races. Every single person in RC can afford $40. It's not a question about the money, right? So then people say, if it's behind a paywall, less people see it. No, they don't. Less people see it live. The same amount of people would see it live if they just paid the $10, which everyone can afford. This is an attitude problem, not a financial problem. So if you had this system, uh, people pay $10 to watch. Everyone can afford that. Uh, Series has the money to put on, you know, great events then after the event a month later or whatever all the videos are free on youtube and facebook and instagram and everywhere so you get that coverage you get all the information out there you just don't get it out live so the true fans who want to watch it live pay a small amount to support the series so it can happen and then after that everyone else all the potential little johnnies out there can go on YouTube and randomly see a great video. Okay. It makes perfect sense. As if much sense. Think, if you just think two minutes about it, it makes perfect sense. I'm not arguing with you. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just yeah, thinking awesome. about nuts in squirrels' assholes. Um, yeah. Th- you kind of lost me at that one. No, I'm, I, 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 would, I would agree. But I, you know what? I'm glad that it is free. This this time, uh, I so this I want this to go viral. So I want people to share this. I want this to I want people to share it. I want to see how much people we can get, and I think this will also go a long way into making sure that RCGP happens again next year. But I'm really I have to reiterate, Associated and SWAX, I'm really upset that we don't, we aren't we aren't seeing Canas. Okay, I could understand after DNC, maybe maybe you know I gave you guys some leeway there. 
well, this is, you know, you attended two races, you're, you're doing well. I would have loved to have seen it. And the Southeast would have loved to have seen it as well. So it's unfortunate, unfortunate, unfortunate. But we still, the show must go on. We're going to have a good time next week in Myrtle Beach. Uh, and we're going to put on a great show. I'm, re- I'm really looking forward to seeing the track and what the guys do. And I think uh, we got some new things planned. And I'd be good to see Peko on American soil too, as well. Yeah, he'll be good. Yeah, and this is gonna be a high bite track. Like, yeah, he'll he'll like it there. So, if you also if you're interested, our entries are still open. Let's get that RC two going. We are gonna do RC two loves RC RCGP loves RC two, and all that good stuff. But it's gonna be a great time trying to get the saltiest of salts to get make sure his comment. He won't tell me if his comment or not. Salty Joe, and uh, you know it's always a good time and salties are on. So good stuff. Get signed up anyway, JQ. I think that's it for today. Our little rant turned into a long rant. I know you got stuff to do. Thank you for your time. I'll see you next week. Remember, um, Pro Built Mugen or Mayako mm-hmm. if you sign up to Invisible Speed. Also, you know what? We have to say uh, uh, some shout outs and some some get well soon, man. Jeremy Quartz's son broke his back, man. Sad. Ugh. Sad. I'll have to go fund for that in this link or this description but uh we send our thoughts out to his family and hopefully his son can recover from that i don't even want to imagine what he's going through right now like jeremy but uh yeah good stuff with uh rcg next week rcgp next week the latin america tour that's coming up here next month uh in uh, november yeah next month yeah it's october jq I know you got a meeting to go to. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. With that said, I want you guys to thank all of you guys, the NNRC squad around the world. We can't do it without you guys. Uh, thank you for the support. Thank you to the patrons of the NNRC squad. If you wish to be a patron, there's a link in the written description of this podcast. You guys get early release. Also, don't forget the membership, YouTube membership. It's like $1.99. It's not bad at all. And of course, thank you to the awesome sponsors of these podcasts, which we have in this written description, we have links, affiliate links, coupon codes. Some of them don't have coupon codes, but just leave a note in the, in the, I'll leave a comment in the notes where you heard about this from, and they are invisible speed. Don't forget the chance to win a Mugen or Mayako built by Robert or David by signing up for the month of, for the course, but in the month of October, TZO 200 tires, TNR fuels, high tech RC, Mayako, Techno RC, Lugs Racing tires, Papa Willie's traction tonic, G-Spec RC Tuning, Sun Pedal USA. Still got one battery to give away, two batteries to give away. Listen to episode 203. You can find out how to win it. Racecraft USA, looking at that wall, Drew. I want to get one. RCGP, be good to be around them next week. House of RC, Clinic RC. Shout out to the NNRC drivers. They are David Ronahoe, Jared Tebow, Alexander Hagberg. Happy birthday to the doctor, belated birthday. And Robert Badier. JQ, it was good talking to you. It's good to see you somewhat relaxed but still in a very if you're complaining i know you're in a good mood so exactly there, you've been complaining and since you got on her yeah thank you for your time see you next week we're gonna have some fun in in yeah we gotta do top golf and dave and busters when we go to Myrtle beach next next week that'd be good okay see every i'm looking forward to seeing all the southeast people there as well looking forward to seeing my old self southeast rc family have some t- fun with you guys and salty joe I met your godson this weekend, Salty Jr., Kimo RC. Yeah, I met him, got talking to him. I just want to shout him out. Salty, buy your plane ticket. See you in Myrtle Beach next weekend. Tell, you better message Salty and tell him, hurry up. Get his stuff going. Let's go. JQ, anything to say before we leave? If you're going to do, do something and support something, do it properly, not half fast. Then things can actually change. And try to not only think about yourself, Think about the greater good. Rising tide lifts all the ships, not just your own. So open your fucking eyes. Yeah. And squirrels yeah. don't store nuts in their buttholes. That's yeah, what but I if learned. If there was a video podcast. of that, everyone would watch it, even if it wasn't <laughs> live and it was five years old. <laughs> With that said, Lefty, JQ, we're out. See you guys next. Uh, yeah, I don't know. See you guys at RCGP. Check you later. Nitro's to glory. E-buggy pays the bills. JQ. Squirrels. I have bills. Don't. I have bills. Leave. Don't store nuts in that part of their body. They okay. store them in their mouth. Uh, with right. that said, we're out. <laughs>